The Salukis were in for a battle on homecoming against Missouri State. Joel Samberski scoring one of four he would be responsible for in the game, but this one went into overtime. And this pass to JT Wise put the Salukis up by seven. It was up to the defense to come up huge. They did on fourth down. The Salukis hang on to win it 30 to 23. Now, can they take care of Western Illinois? It's all next right here on Mediacom. From Hanson Field on the campus of Western Illinois University, it's the Salukis on the road against the Western Illinois Leathernecks. The pregame show is brought to you by Brian Furniture. Brian Furniture in downtown Herod invites you to enjoy Saluki football. Sit back and enjoy Saluki football courtesy of Brian Furniture. I'm Mike Trude. Thad Jackson is alongside. We hope you enjoy this one tonight because it could be a barn burner. The Salukis are 3-1, and one, and Western Illinois comes in with a record of 2-3. and three. The Salukis went for 18 straight years losing to this Western Illinois ball team before they finally have won three games in a row. It's nice to turn around a losing streak, Thad. Absolutely, and the, you talk to anybody on the Southern program, they point to that game that turned around Saluki football, that 54-52 homecoming win in 2000. Two, and from then, then things just got rolling and rolling and Southern now, like you said, Mike, winners of three straight. The Salukis are nationally ranked number two in the country, but the defense has been tested a little bit lately, but they do get a key member bank. Number five, Frank Johnson, is back on the field after missing a couple of ball games, and that is huge for this defense. Absolutely, and Frank Johnson, the, the safety, you think about him covering the receivers, but also he's such a great tackler, so when Western does penetrate into that second or third level of the Saluki defense, then Johnson can come up and make the big hits and stop, stop any momentum that Western has. And one of the guys that Frank Johnson Johnson is going to have to stop tonight is Travis Gladford. He is a Walter Payton candidate for 1AA football. He's their top back and a threat anytime he gets his hands on the ball. Well, he's a senior and he's done everything from some, the first time he stepped on the field here at Hanson Field from a freshman all the way through. And Glassford is their go-to guy. He's a senior. Look for them to establish the run. And Southern, opposite of that, wants to stop Glassford. That's their key priority in this game. It's the Salukis and Leathernecks from Western Illinois. We hope you stay tuned for the ball game coming up next. Welcome back to the football game. The Salukis and Leathernecks just about to get underway here at Hanson Field. We mentioned it being a big game for the Salukis, and there are a few keys for Southern to do well in this football game today. On the offensive side of things, the Salukis need to be patient, Thad. Yeah, we talked to uh, running backs coach Rob Reeves earlier, and he said Western will throw all kinds of defensive schemes. They'll mix things up. They'll put linebackers on the line. They have the three up front, but they'll do a lot of different things, and Southern just needs to be patient and play their game. And run the football is a key. Western's given up a lot of yards this year. Yeah, and we'll probably see Craig Turner doing the running for Southern. Arkey Whitlock still nursing an injury. We'll get to that a little bit later. But, yeah, Southern just pound the ball and run, stay behind those big guys up front. Defensively, the Salukis need to tackle better than they did a week ago and contain that big number 22, Travis Glassford. We touched on that a little bit in the pregame. You're absolutely right. Use those big bodies up front, get leverage, get into the backfield and stop Glassford. And Southern did it just exactly that last year in Carbondale. The Salukis won the toss. They deferred their option to the second half, so Western Illinois will be first up on offense. They will receive the kickoff, and back deep for Western Illinois is number 81. He is Paul Anderson. He's a wide receiver, a freshman, 5'11", out of Alton, Illinois. There is a just a slight wind. It is at the back of the Salukis. And Craig Coffin has the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. Saluki is 1-0 in the gateway, looking for 2-0. They're number two in the country. We are underway. And it's taken at the two-yard line. Hit hard at the 26 by the Saluki's Patrick Jordan. That'll be Anderson on the return. Nice. Nice field position. They'll get up to about the 26, about a 25-yard return for Anderson, and a nice hit by Southern. So Western Illinois will start on offense first. They will start from their 26-yard line. Redshirt junior quarterback Steve LaFalce will be taking snaps behind center.
I take that back. Looks like Rob Ducey's going to start. And there's the give to Glassford. It was the false, handing it to Travis Glassford. We got up to 31. Let's go to the starting lineups brought to you by George Weber Chevrolet in Waterloo. Drive a little, save a lot at George Weber Chevrolet. Up front, it's Walker, Sweeney, Cox, Valley, and more for the Leathernecks. Their skill people are very good. LaFalse, the quarterback, Yellen, Travis Glassford, the Walter Payton candidate, tailback, Marco Thomas and Reggie Gray, the wide receivers, and Boomer Moore is the tight end. What a great name for a tight end for Western Illinois. It's second down. We have uh, a whistle stopping play, and apparently they're having a little trouble with the football. They were using the Southern Illinois football, and they need to change over to the Western Illinois football. And now the referee, Frump, is talking things over with one of his colleagues, and they can't decide which football to use. <laughs> Mike, in that starting lineup, you just mentioned Reggie Gray, and uh, we'll look to call his name several times. He's their go-to guy in the receiving core here for Western, a senior out of Chicago. It's going to be second down and six. Still some confusion <laughs> as to uh, which football to use. Maybe both teams use the same football. It's one of the things we didn't go over in the pregame. <laughs> we weren't sure this was going to be an issue, but they currently have three footballs on the field. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about ready to go. Second down now from the 32 yard line. The false to pass and a good rush by the Salukis. Pressure from the get-go from Southern. Lionel Williams all the way in the backfield. You can hear the Southern uh, defenders yelling out the pass. They knew it all the way. And Lionel, a good job wrapping up, getting in the backfield and not letting the false move. Big guys up front. So it brings up third down and long, about third and a long 12. Make it 13 for the Leathernecks. Passing down situation. Reggie Gray goes in the slot on the right side as four receivers are in the ball game. The false back to pass. Again, being pressured. Tries to dump it off to Glassford. He wouldn't have got more than a couple yards. There's a penalty marker way downfield. And we'll check out this uh, penalty marker after we check out the Salukis on defense. It's Billy Beard, Linton Brown, Lionel Williams, and Jeff Jones, the front four for the Salukis. The linebackers, senior Royal Whitaker and Tony Ranella. And in the defensive backfield, Anthony Williams, Brad Brashear, Marlon Heaston, Frank Johnson, and Jamarcus Jordan. It'll be fourth down. Inadvertent flag on the play. And... Back to punt for Western Illinois is Chris Coffey. It's a 6'2 junior. And back deep to receive for the Saluki standing on the 35 yard line is Craig Turner. It's a fake. And he is hammered at the 24 yard line. And the Salukis have excellent field position on the play. Wow. <laughs> Great pursuit by Southern from the punter, looked like a low snap. The rush came hard from the left side as we see it here. He did fumble the snap, was not gonna get it off, and just is hammered by number 53 for the Salukis, Trevor Moe. So Southern starts on offense, great field position at the Western Illinois 25 yard line. Joel Samberski will be the quarterback. Craig Turner is the tailback behind JT Wise. Greg Turner gets a quick six right away on offense. There we said what Southern's going to do. Run, run, run. Get behind those big bodies. There's the guys up front. It is Darren Marquez, Jimmy Wegerer, Will Justice, the center, Jared Green, and Andrew Kearns on the right side. Sam Bursky, the quarterback. JT Wise, the fullback. Craig Turner at the tailback. Kellen Allen and Brent Little are the wide receivers. And Chris Kupek is the starting tight end tonight. Micah Turner will also see action. It's second down and five. And Southern can't get a play in, so they have to call a timeout. The Salukis take their first timeout. It's second down and five from the Western Illinois 20-yard line. We're just underway here at Macomb. We'll be right back. You're watching Saluki football on Mediacom Cable.
Western Illinois coach Don Patterson thought his team had to play a near perfect game to beat the Salukis and already on their first possession they've committed a turnover not really a turnover but almost a turnover when Southern gets the ball inside Western Illinois territory at the 25 yard line. So it's second down and five for Southern. Kellen Allen is wide to the right side in motion to the left goes Kupek he comes back to the right side. There goes Turner. There goes Turner. All the way down to the one or two yard line. And Southern wants to run, run, run the football tonight and they get enough for the first down. It's been Craig Turner on two carries for 23 yards. Just watch Craig Turner with that full head of steam. Watch his legs keep moving. Even when a guy wraps up his back foot, watch his legs keep moving. Puts his hands down to keep his balance and still gets out of the hold for a couple more yards. Nearly in the end zone. Craig is playing tonight. Our key Whitlock could play but still has a little bit of a bruised hip, so they're holding him out unless it's necessary. First and goal from the two. Craig Turner's in for the touchdown. Followed the right side of that big line, and Southern gets on top after just three offensive plays. Attribute that to the field position, Mike, the, the bobbled snap on the punt, and Southern easily gets in the end zone. Credit that to the offensive guys up front, and Craig Turner into the end zone. Just off the right side, and Turner only needing a couple of yards, busts through the hole, putting his head down and getting through. Greg Coffin on to try the extra point, holding is John Cairns. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So we're literally just underway. The people still haven't gotten in their seats. The Salukis lead it by a score of 7 0, 12 26 left to go in the first quarter. We'll be back with more Saluki football. We are back at Hanson Field. The Salukis jump out on top 7 to nothing, and they are a high-scoring bunch when they get it going. <laughs> Number one in the nation in scoring offense, Southern averaging 49.5 points per game. We're only two and a half into this one. Already seven on the board for Southern. And Western Illinois gives up 39.2 points per game, so this has the makings of a high-scoring affair. Coffin slips and falls. And it's going to turn out to be a pretty nice kickoff. It's taken all the way back to the four yard line by Franklin. He doesn't get out to the 17 yard line. Coffin slipped on his approach, but it worked out OK. Everything going Southern's way. Coffin slipping on the kick, and it's a low liner, but right through the wickets of the Western returner. And they're going to have pretty poor field position. Western will start first and 10 from its own 16 yard line. Western Illinois is giving up 39.2 points a game, scoring 34.4 points a game. They're looking to get even in the Gateway Conference at one and one. We have some surprising scores for you, and we'll get to those as we have time. The false play action. Heavy rush is on, under throws his receiver. Would have been enough for the first down at the 29 yard line. He was trying to hit. Marco Thomas is wide receiver, but again, good pressure up front from the Salukis. Great pressure from the big guys up front. You'll also see two other guys giving chase on this replay. 55 and 34, the two linebackers, Tony Ranella and Royal Whitaker, also pressuring LaFalse into the bad pass. That was a Coleman Rhodes instant replay, the home of quality furniture. Coleman Rhodes in downtown Frankfurt. Second and long now for LaFalse and the Leathernecks of Western Illinois. It's Glassford. Got a little bit of a seam and got across the 21 yard line, maybe out to the 22. But Mike, did you see who came back and got that tackle? It was Frank Johnson. We talked about him before the game. Frank gets into the backfield, reaches back around. You'll see number five coming into the corner of your screen. Now watch Frank work with it. Glassford goes by him, but it's Frank who gets the toe hold and brings Glassford down. The initial That's what contact was huge. You're right. Yep. It's third down and about four. Wide to the right goes Marco Thomas. Reggie Gray is in the slot to the right. He is a dangerous receiver when he gets his hands on the football. Quick drop to the tight end Boomer Moore. And that is enough for a first down for the Leathernecks. We talked about Southern, the yards after contact right there. Tony Ronella doing a good job of wrapping up. Royal Whitaker in with some help on the little dump off pass across the middle. There's Ronella, watch. Contact, hold him, and let Royal come in. 
and help complete the tackle. You said one of the keys of the game tonight was tackling, and Southern a week ago against Missouri State struggled on that initial contact to bring any of the people down, whether it was a tailback or a wide receiver or a tight end. Tonight, thus far, so far, they've been doing a better job of tackling, and again, timeout on the field. Timeout by Western Illinois. So the Leathernecks take their first timeout. 11.15 left to go here in the first quarter. Each team has taken a timeout, and we'll come back with more Saluki football on Mediacom right after this. Hey! It's first and 10 for the Leathernecks. LaFalle's back to pass. Getting some heat and just throws it away. Nobody was open. They were looking for Reggie Gray. But again, nothing happening in the middle for Western Illinois. But a good job by Southern with the coverage deep. The false with a little bit of time scrambling, getting away from the pressure up front, but nobody open downfield. Great job by Southern defensively. So it'll be second and 10 from the 27 yard line. Saluki's on top, seven to nothing. Craig Turner with the two yard touchdown run. Southern scoring drive was three plays, 25 yards. The false play action. Completes it to Reggie Gray right at the boundary. Good enough for a Western Illinois first down. Double covered, but a great pass by the false to the talented receiver, Reggie Gray. That's a good job by the receiver to stay in bounds, too. That one passed over to the far sideline. And Gray, the senior, the leader of the receiving group here at Western, Good job to keep his feet in. His 28th catch of the year for he's got over 300 yards in receiving this year. First and 10 now from the 37. New tailback in the game, that is 26, Alex Douglas, who gets across midfield to the Saluki 49-yard line. Another first down and a nice hole for Alex Douglas, who spelled Glassford on the play. Yeah, Douglas do shades of Glassford, though. Watch out these quick cuts and making people miss. I mean, Glassford, Glassford is back in the game, but a good, job, good job running by Douglas. Marlon Heaston in on the tackle for the Salukis in the deep secondary. And another stoppage of play. This is the fourth stoppage of play with the referees. Gateway Conference referees like to gather around and discuss things a lot. They're going to put time back on the clock. So the clock will be put back to about 10.57. And now they start the clock. So it's first and 10 from the Saluki 49-yard line. Mention some other scores. Youngstown State over Indiana State, 45 to nothing this afternoon. We'll get to the others after this play. It's Glassford. He's into the secondary. And another punishing tackle by Heaston. But if Marlon Heaston and Frank Johnson are making the tackles all day, Glassford's going to have some yards. We talked about him getting into, the, into that second and third level, the Saluki defense, and you saw Glassford there. Just that quick, explosive, got to hit the hole, hit it quick, and he does. And then Heaston coming up with a big hit to bring him down. Also in on that tackle is Frank Johnson. Western started this drive at the 16-yard line. Missouri State beats Northern Iowa in Springfield 24 to 21 this afternoon. Northern Iowa no longer unbeaten in gateway play. First down again, swing pass. Glassford gets outside of Ranella and gets out of bounds at the Saluki 24 yard line. And once he got beyond Tony Ranella, it was gonna be a foot race. Well, the Glassford can do that too, not just get the handoff and run, but he'll swing out wide. Yeah, and just the quickness, watch him explode and just leave Ranella behind and a good job of Glassford looking upfield, knowing where he's got to get to for the first down. And Western marching on this Saluki defense. First and 10 from the 24. Into the huddle comes Carl Sims. Sims and Gray will go wide to the left side. Marco Thomas will go wide to the right. Split backfield behind LaFalse. Back to pass, now he's gonna keep it. A lot of running room for the Falls. And he gets down close to first down yardage at the Saluki 15, a gain of nine. That's just a good play call by the Leathernecks. The draw all the way, LaFalse selling the pass. About a three-step step drop and looking for that hole. 
And that's the holes that Glassford has just hit, and then the false showing that he can move too. Middle opened up like the Red Sea for the Leatherneck quarterback, and he took advantage. So it's now second and one from the Saluki 15. That's Douglas gets the first down, down to around the Saluki 11. Well, and if you're uh, Western's head coach, Don Patterson, this is what you needed. You needed a long drive, eat up some of the clock, get back into Saluki territory. You, you've had a few miscues that have led to the Southern score. And again, Douglas with a nice hard run here. Jeff Jones fighting off the block of Boomer Moore, the tight end, to make the tackle. But it was good enough for first down yardage. Gray and Thomas go wide to the right. Sims goes wide to the left. Travis, Travis Glassford, a lone tailback. The Salukis jump off sides. A hard count by the false that time. And the Salukis jumped. So the ball is on the 11, so they can't get a first down. It was first and 10. We'll see. They're going to mark off the penalty. It will be first and five now from the six, so they can get a first down at the one yard line. So Western just there was there was the jump on the left side of the Saluki defense. Everything going right for Western here. Started at the 16 yard line. Here comes Glassford. Strung him out and nailed him for a loss of about three. And a great job by the defensive back on the left side who came up and made Glassford try to go around him, which let Pursuit come up and make the tackle. I think that was Jamarcus Jordan right there in the backfield with the initial uh, pursuit of Glassford. And again, like I said, Mike strung him out, allowed all the other Saluki defenders to get over there and stop Glassford. And another stoppage of play by the officials. And of course, they need to huddle. Well, the play clock was still running when they blew the whistle. Now it's back at 25. It was down to 15. So, so far, they're having some trouble with the play clock. But what was first and five is now second and about eight. Anderson is wide right. Triple receivers to the left. LaFalse in shotgun. And the offensive lineman moved first on that one. Two guys did move on the play. And we'll see how this one is going to end up. Yeah, it looks like Western's going to be backing up, so they just got that five yards back. A dead ball. Illegal snap by the center. Number 79. Five yard penalty. Second down. Perry Cox, 79, the center. Must have moved the ball. We couldn't see it there, but any little ball movement. And he'll get called for the penalty. Looks like they may have the exact same play called because trips are to the left with one wide out to the right side. The false in shotgun. Back to pass. Quick drop. Reggie Gray hit hard at the five, pushed forward to the four. And it's third down and about three. Just a little slant pattern by Gray to split up those three defenders on the left side. Watch him come across your screen right here. LaFalse with a nice looking pass. Marlon Heaston with the initial hit. And then Frank Johnson again coming from behind. Marlon's been on, on in on three or four tackles already in this football game. And the defensive backs had the majority of tackles a week ago against Missouri State. It's third down and about three. See if Southern can hold and force them to kick a field goal. LaFalse. Nowhere to go. Hammered back at the 10. And that was a busted play from the get-go. It almost looked like he wanted to do a little shovel pass, and there wasn't anybody there but the Saluki defensive line. Had he done it, it would have went right into the hands of Frank Johnson. Number five right in your screen, splitting up the running back that goes out wide right, and LaFalse with nowhere to go, turns right around, and he's met by three Saluki defenders. Fourth down. So they'll be forced to try a field goal. Taylor Rowan, a freshman, We'll try one from about the 17 yard line, about a 27 yard field goal attempt. Snap is good. 
And the kick is good. And the Salukis bend but don't break. And the Leathernecks do get on the board. It is now the Saluki 7, Western Illinois 3, 6.47 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back. It was a 75-yard scoring drive for Western Illinois that stalled at the 9, and they came on to kick a 27-yard field goal. So the Leathernecks are on the board. The Saluki defense did a nice job once Western got inside the 10-yard line. So Southern will get it back on offense. Taylor Rowan has it teed up at 35. Craig Turner and Rennell Thomas back to return this kickoff. It's going to be Rennell Thomas. No, it goes out of bounds. And Southern will get the ball at the 35-yard line. So that's not bad. Good starting field position for Southern. After the out-of-bounds kick, Sam Bursky will lead his team back out to the 35-yard line, see if Southern can answer the long drive by Western. Southern's only time on offense. It started at the Western 25 and in three plays scored a touchdown. Craig Turner got all three carries. There's the referee um, front talking about the kick out of bounds, so the Salukis automatically get the ball at the 35-yard line. And Southern indicated in the last couple of days that they want to run, run, run the football against this Western Illinois 3-3 defense. Kellen Allen in motion to the near side. Joel stumbles, keeps his feet, has a wide open Micah Turner across midfield, down to the 40, down to the 32-yard line. Great job by Joel to keep his composure, nearly slipped, backing up. A great block, block by Kellen Allen upfield, though, that allowed Micah Turner to get about 10 more yards. Joel slips on his back, but may have tripped over wise, it looked like. Nice pass to hit Micah Turner in stride. And watch the block by number 16 upfield, sealing off his man there. You just saw him go by, and Turner able to get an extra 10 yards for Southern because of that block by Kellen Allen. 33-yard pass completion from Joel to Micah Turner. Run, run, run the football, and they throw it to Micah. <laughs> First and 10. Give it to Turner. And he just bowls his way for a good five yards. And Southern has gotten nothing less than five yards every time they've touched the ball, except for the two-yard touchdown run. But you see the guy right in front of Craig Turner. That's JT Wise, the big fullback for Southern. He's the guy farthest upfield, and that's the guy you want to get behind. Craig Turner just right in his hip pocket and gaining an extra five yards. JT had a blast a week ago scoring the winning touchdown in Boy, overtime against Missouri State. <laughs> well deserved. Second and a long five for the Salukis. In motion to the right side goes Kupek. Turner hit at the line. A good defensive play by the Leathernecks. I will just point out again that JT Wise was the farthest guy upfield again, you know, and he just got a little bit up ahead of Turner. But Will, a good play by, by West. Number 23, Will Bailey, the senior linebacker out of Tracy, California, made the tackle. So it's third down, maybe a loss of about half a yard on the play. Third and six for the Salukis. Wise comes out of the game. Antoine Jackson in. Jackson is in a slot on the right side with Brent Little wide to the right. Kellen Allen in the slot to the right. Joel wants to run it, trips over his own man, does not get the first down. He got about to the 27 yard line. It'd be about a 43 yard field goal try for Coffin, and Coffin's gonna come on with John Cairns. Joel running into his center, Will Justice. Joel just trying to make something out of that play, if he could. Cairns is gonna mark the ball at around the 33 yard line, so it's gonna be a 43 yard field goal attempt for Craig Coffin. Kick is up, plenty of distance, and it's good! Coffin nails it, 43 yards, and the Salukis answer the field goal with a field goal of their own. 4.17 left to go in the first quarter. It's the Salukis 10, Western Illinois 3. We'll be back. Craig Coffin has kicked longer field goals. His longest is 52 yards, but this is the longest one this year, 43 yards to match Western Illinois field goal and Salukis get back their seven point lead here in the first quarter. Number 81 back deep for Western is Paul Anderson. 
Nice high, long kick that Anderson will take at the one. Bobbles it at the three. He's got a bit of a hole. And Kellen Allen literally comes out of nowhere to make the tackle right at the 35-yard line. Well, if you're the kick returner, that's exactly what you want to do, is what Anderson did. He had a wall of blockers on the near side, got past that wall. Here's his, watch the first wall of blockers. Then once he gets past them, he has a few more blockers up to his right, and he uses them and gets a few extra yards. Nice return by Anderson. So out come the Leathernecks. Wide to the left goes Carl Sims. Glassford, the lone back behind LaFalce. La Glassford hit in the backfield, but I think one of the Salukis got a little bit too high and grabbed a piece of the face mask. And they did. I think it's just going to be a five yarder because I didn't see a personal foul called, but you'll see it here. I don't know if it was Jeff Jones. Yes. Yep. No. Face yes, mask. Jeff Jones. Glassford's one of those guys that wears the eye protection in his face mask. Just for those reasons, in case any of those big fingers from the linemen get in there, they're not going to poke you in the eye. So instead of second and 15, it's first and five. So it's a big, big penalty. And Jerry Kill harped on it in practice yesterday to, to stay under control and keep the penalties to a minimum. The Salukis have been averaging eight penalties a game. Three receivers to the right. One to the left. It's first and five. See what LaFalce does. Quick screen pass to the right side. And they split the Saluki defense. That was DeMarco Thomas. A nice play. A big gain of almost 30 yards. Junior wide out of Chicago. Watch LaFalce's pass. And he, he leads Thomas just a little bit. So he has those extra couple steps of momentum. He's already got his momentum going forward and speed going. And finally, it's Heaston who forces him out of bounds. Saw an impressive drive from this Leatherneck team. Last time they had the ball, and they're marching again into Saluki territory now. Ball is at the Southern 41. They're giving Marco Thomas a 19-yard reception on that play. LaFall still with it. Again, it's Marco Thomas. Nice play action by LaFalce. Thomas did well to get by Jamarcus Jordan before help came. Good fake by LaFalce to hide the ball and, and sent the entire Saluki defense headed to their left. And then a reverse action. There's Jamarcus Jordan, number 20, in your screen. It's Marlon Heaston, number seven, who will come up and make the tackle. Good shake and bake by uh, Thomas. Second and short. See if LaFalce wants to take a shot to the end zone. It's second and about one for a first down at the Saluki 33. About time for a sack, a southern sack. Here comes Glassford. Nothing doing on that play. He lost a yard, and it's going to be third down and three. Up front for the Salukis. Again, penetration was the key on that one. Glassford had nowhere to go. Couldn't bounce it outside. I think we'll see Lionel Williams, number 94. Mark Phillip in there, 99. Billy Beard, I think. So it's third down and a long three now for the Leathernecks. Could possibly be in two down territory here. I don't know if they would punt it from the 34, and it's a little bit long for a field goal try, but see what happens on third down. The false swings it to the outside to Glassford. Southern's got him hemmed in, and he loses about another half yard back to the 35-yard line. So now it's fourth down. And again, a great job by the Saluki defense. He did lose almost two yards on the play. It's fourth and six now. Glassford with nowhere to go. Jeff Jones giving good pursuit, and they just stay in front of Glassford. Jones giving chase, and Marlon Heaston comes over. A lot of help from that Saluki D. And that's a defensive end, folks, making the play out there on the side on a very talented and fast running back. And Western Illinois is going to have to talk things over. They had it second and less than one from the 32. And now it's fourth down and about six. We'll take a break. It's 10-3. Saluki's back after this. With Thad Jackson, Mike Trude back at 
Hanson Field in beautiful downtown Macomb. It was a beautiful day for football here, and it's actually a very, very nice night. People here have uh, light jackets on as the sun is going down, and it's expected to get down into the lower 40s by the end of the game time tonight. But uh, a beautiful afternoon, and proud of probably nine, maybe 10,000 people, maybe 9,000 here tonight. Fourth down and six now for the Leathernecks. They go with three receivers to the right side. Reggie Gray is the man in the middle on the right side, and he's the dangerous one on a slant pattern. Pressure coming. LaFalse is going to go down again. No, he's not. <laughs> I don't think they ever And it's the intercepted, play dead. and Patrick Jordan has the football. They never did blow the play dead, and the Salukis have an interception at the 44, and they would have been better off going down. The false must have stayed on his feet, decided to get the ball out, deflected off a couple people. Patrick Jordan, Jordan, it tipped twice, I think, before Jordan finally got the football. And Southern again with great field position at the 43-yard line. Here it is again. And I thought they would have blown the play dead. Jamarcus Jordan had him wrapped up. So did Philip Doyle. And then he throws it to nobody. Anyway, deflected and Jordan and Southern gets, oh, about 20 or 30 more yards out of that instead of the false just going down. First and 10. Joel back. Joel hit hard. Back at the 48-yard line. And the offensive line just crumbled on that play. Western brought everybody, though. There were only two guys out in the pattern, Brent Little and uh, Chris and Chris Kupek. A loss of about eight on the play. I think Southern was looking to capitalize there and go deep and strike quickly. Kellen Allen was downfield, but a good defensive effort by was Mylon Woodard, the DB for Western. Second and long now for the Salukis. Allen wide left for Southern. Craig Turner. Some hard hitting down there from the offensive and defensive lines. He gains about three. Tackled by Western Illinois is Travis Cherry from his linebacker spot. We'll see the guard number 64, Jared Green, pull over, and he'll be out leading the pack. Good pursuit by Western. So it's third and long for the Salukis. See if they can take advantage of the turnover. Western shows blitz. Here they come. Joel's got some time, but not enough. Can't fake anybody out. It is hit hard by Curtis Clement. Will Bailey, rather, excuse me. Will Bailey, the linebacker, number 23, and it's fourth down for the Salukis at about the 42-yard line. Very rare to see Joel Samburski slide. He's a competitor, and he'll take these hits, try to get as many yards as he can. Look, he put his head down and just take the punishment, but Joel immediately bouncing back up. What a tough guy. Zach Kettlecamp is back in punt formation. Reggie Gray is standing on his 10-yard line. And the first quarter has come to an end. So the Salukis have 10 points, Western Illinois three. We'll be back with the second quarter right after these messages. As we start the second quarter, the Salukis are in punt formation, leading at 10 to three, a Craig Turner two yard run. Field goal by Craig Coffin and a field goal for Western Illinois by Taylor Rowan and it's 10-3 Salukis. Reggie Gray is standing on his 10-yard line. We're just about ready to get the okay from the official. Zach Kettlecamp will punt for Southern. Got some good kicks off in the pregame. He has struggled this year. High. Reggie Gray calls for a fair catch at the eight yard line. And so Western will get things underway at the eight. A good punt, nice hang time by Kettle Camp. And Western Illinois will start inside its 10 yard line to start the second quarter. Here at Hanson Field in Macomb, Illinois. A late start, 6.05 start. And Coach Don Patterson in his seventh year against Gateway teams under the lights is undefeated, nine and oh. 
at Western. All right. So Lukey's looking to change that. The number one team in 1AA football lost today. New Hampshire lost to William & Mary. So a Saluki victory over Western Illinois tonight should catapult the Salukis back into the top spot in the 1AA poll. We've got a long way to go on this one, though, with the upsets that happened, or maybe they weren't upsets in the gateway today. We'll see what happens. Here comes Glassford on the right side. Nothing doing. Maybe a gain of two on the play. Another hard hit from Southern. You talk about the gateway, and every coach from the top to the bottom will just talk about how this league has become so balanced. And Southern used to be one of those teams down at the bottom. Now that they're, you know, a better team, and everybody's getting better. Illinois State, a team to contend with. They just took Western Kentucky into overtime. Never an easy win. You want to protect your home field and try to steal these wins on the road like Southern's trying to do here in Macomb. Perry Cox, the center for Western Illinois, just left the football game. So we'll see what happens now. And Western Illinois, I believe, has to take another timeout. Leathernecks do have to take a timeout. We'll take a break, too. 14-18 left to go in the second quarter. We'll be back. Perry Cox was the guy who got hurt on the play. He's the center. We think we might have a shot of where he went down as Glassford comes up the gut here. There's Cox, number 79. Official kind of gets in the way. It looks like he may have got rolled a little bit on his knee. But they do have a substitute in there. It's number 71, Turner Nelson. It's a 6'2 senior out of Iowa. I take that back. Cox is already back in there. So taking a timeout allowed them to put Cox back in the football game. The false with it. Gray with a nice spin move. Got hammered by number 34 for the Salukis. A big shot, but it was enough, I think, for the first down as Royal Whitaker laid some pads onto Glassford. Definitely a good hit here onto Gray. Yeah, you're right, Royal. And his fellow linebacker Tony Rinella. We're going to get a measurement for the first down. Great with a good spin move to create some extra yards. The ball had to get to the 24 yard line. And from the looks up here, it has crossed the 24 yard line and should be a first down. And it is by the length of the football. So Western gets a first down. They started at the nine. They're up to the 19 with a first and 10. Coming up at halftime. Thad will have an interview with Saluki Assistant Athletic Director Mark Scally. He's the Assistant AD in charge of business operations for Saluki Athletics, and Mark will be up, and they will talk about a myriad of things over the halftime celebration here at Western Illinois. It's first down for the Leathernecks, and one of their linemen moved again. And the Salukis took advantage of that by crossing the line. Justin Lowe's made sure that he was caught. And so Western Illinois will be dead ball. Ball starts. Number 61 on the offense. Five yard penalty. And then he's down. See if it was a hard count. Penalty was called on number 61 right there. The little jerk to the shoulder. Yep. So it's first and 15. Just underway here in the second quarter. Gray is wide to the left side. LaFalse spins that way and hits Gray for a gain of about 13. Out of bounds at the 27 or the 28. It'll be second down and short. Or is it incomplete? Incomplete pass, I'm sorry. So it'll be second down and long. It's a good job by LaFalse rolling to his left, the right-handed quarterback, and throwing off a one foot, threaded the needle. Right in between a couple Saluki defenders, but just a little bit outside the lines. He caught the ball, but he was just out of bounds. So it's second and long, and the big tight end, Boomer Moore, comes back in. Western's only got seven seconds to get the playoff. They're not going to get it off. They do get it off. The false wants to do a screen. Oh, it's almost intercepted. <laughs> Jeff Jones <laughs> almost had a touchdown, and then Douglas had a chance to make the catch for Western. 
But false evidently he turned quickly and didn't see Jeff Jones there and right off the big paws of the big man, Jeff. Let's watch it here. Just out of his reach. And you're right, Mike. The uh, receiver for Western nearly had a chance to. And if he catches it, he's going to get some yeah. yards. Now it's third down and very long for the Leathernecks. See if the Salukis can at least force Western into a punting situation here. Well, if you're Jeff Jones, you shake it off, and now you try to bust right around that in and get to the false on your own. Two receivers to the left, Gray, one of them. The false straight drop back. Now he's going to run the football. He's got some room. Oh, he got hammered. That's Frank By Johnson. Frank Johnson. <laughs> Boy, it, everybody tells you Frank's the hardest hitter on this team. Wow. Well, he's getting some hits. <laughs> well, the false bounced right up to his credit. Yep. And uh, short of the first down, Western's going to have to punt the football away. Here it is again. Frank sees it the whole time. As soon as the false takes off, Frank had about a 15 yard head start coming full speed. The Frank Johnson train head on. Oh, the false with the hit. <laughs> Craig Turner's back on the 35 yard line. Southern had a decent rush. Turner does not like to fair catch, but he does anyway at the 35. So Southern will take over. First and 10 from their own 35 yard line. Each team now is punted a couple of times. Mike, while we got a few minutes, we're, we're just into the second quarter. Your, your first quarter of stats, uh, rushing yards about equal, 34 for Southern, 37 for Western. The Leathernecks leading the passing category with 60 yards. Southern putting up 33. Craig Turner with 33 yards receiving, or uh, rushing, excuse me. Here we go, first and 10 for the Salukis. Joel gives it to Craig Turner. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage by number 24, Wyatt Green, the linebacker. Their linebackers paved the way, or the uh, the down line, and paved the way for linebackers to make plays in this defense. And Turner had a gain of about two. They will mix things up up front there, and they do use kind of that 3-3 that three, three defense with a, a nose tackle and two ends, and then they have the three linebackers, Cherry, Bailey, and Green, and those guys can be up on the line in their backer position anywhere on this field. Second and about eight. Micah Turner comes to the left side. Joel gets it to Brent Little. He tried to run with it before he had it. Drops the ball, had an easy first down. He just took his eye off at the last second. He's done that a few times this year, looking upfield right before he catches the football. Now it's third and long. Trying to, to get some yards before you catch the ball, but it's interesting. I listened to head, uh, quarterback's coach, Pat Poor, and he said exactly this. If a guy's giving you a cushion, you can see the five or 10 yard cushion there that Little had. If he's giving it to you and he's backpedaling slowly, Joel's supposed to just unleash the ball. Brent will turn right back to it. Little should have made that catch. That was Charles Hayden on the uh, coverage. Corey Payne now in the football game. Third and long for Southern. Joel back to pass. Loops it up to Allen Turner, who couldn't quite come down with it. Had a chance to make the catch, just didn't come down with it. And it's going to be fourth down, and Southern's going to have to punt it again. What an attempt by Turner. Got out in front of his defenders. May have jumped just a little bit too early and couldn't haul it in. I think you're right. It was a timing play, and we'll see it again. It'll be coming right at you. 82 will be in your screen. Nice move. He's open. I got pushed in the back. I got pushed a little bit <laughs> he in the did back. Get yeah. In the back. So Kettle Camp on his 22 yard line. Reggie Gray standing on his 27. Line of scrimmage is the 37. Zach gets a nice one, turns it over. Reggie Gray hammered as soon as he touches the football. Great coverage downfield, nice hang time by Kettle Camp, and sheer guts by Reggie Gray. <laughs> He got ran into it by about three Leathernecks and three Salukis, and he just disappeared in this pile. Watch this. Gray not wanting to call the fair catch, and he's just going to disappear right here in the, in Brashear, the pile. Brashear and Thomas Lang on the coverage, probably two of the fastest Salukis on the team. So the teams trade punts. Back on offense come the Leathernecks. Salukis lead at 10 to 3. 11.46 left to go here in the second quarter. 
Samberski one out of three for 33 yards thus far. The false over the middle. Pretty poor tackling by the Salukis on Glassford, and they gain about seven on the play. That was LaFalse's ninth completion. He's nine out of 15 for about 75 yards. You're right, Mike. A couple guys had a chance to, to wrap Glassford up. And then he turned around and got about an extra five yards out of it. So it's second down and short. Boomer Moore leaves. In comes an extra wide receiver. Tracy Clay is the defensive coordinator for Southern said about 75% of their practice this week was just focusing on themselves, not worrying about what Western does, but what Southern needs to do right in this ballgame, like tackle and wrap up. Over the middle to Marcus Thomas. Gets the first down across the 35 yard line. Marco Thomas just planted himself at the first down marker. LaFalse found him in the team. Turned up field and gained a couple of extra yards, and the Leatherneck drive continues at the 37. Here it is again. Thomas just plants himself. Royal Whitaker in on the tackle, along with somebody from behind for the Salukis. That was number 91, Lorenzo Wims, who's been in on some tackles in this football game. Play action. Going deep. Marco Thomas and Brashear. Marco Thomas with a circus catch at the 22 yard line. He had a few steps on Brashear. Brashear did catch up to him. And they kind of got tripped up over each other. Great concentration by Thomas to haul the catch in. But Brashear was with him the whole way. The difference was Thomas looked back for the football just before Brad did and was able to make the adjustment on the play. And no pressure from the Saluki defensive line, which allowed the false to get time to throw that football. Nobody in your picture there for Southern. Here's the play with Brashear. Brashear caught up to him, and both of them get tangled up. Good concentration. Give it to Glassford. Hit once, hit twice, and finally brought down after a gain of about six. And Western Illinois' talented tailback is running for some yards tonight. He puts him over the 30 yard mark, seven carries for about 34 yards. Just watch how fast he keeps his legs moving and those, those legs pumping. Glass for 5'11, 190. Wide to the left goes Marco Thomas. Reggie Gray goes wide to the right. Give it to Douglas this time on a sweep to the right side. Nothing doing. Third down, no gain at all on the play. Maybe a half yard, but he slipped down at about the 16 yard line. Going to mark it to 15. So it'll be third down and four for third down, a long three yeah, for Doug, Western Illinois. Douglas does slip, but he wasn't going anywhere. Southern had him strung out. Sometimes that's all you need to do. We saw Jeff Jones do that earlier. You don't have to make the tackle, but just give everybody else time to get over there. They would have had Douglas there had he not slipped anyway. Wide to the left for Western Illinois is number 18, Carl Sims. But nothing doing in the backfield on that play. A loss of about six yards, depending on where they mark it. And it's going to be fourth down, and they're going to have to try another field goal. Good penetration by Southern. It's Lorenzo Wims, number 91, already back there by the time Douglas gets out to the right side. So Taylor Rowan will come on to attempt another field goal. They're going to mark it about the 26-yard line. This will be a 36-yard attempt for the freshman. The false is the holder. Good snap. He got all of it. But he missed it to the right side. And again, the bending defense does not break. And the Salukis take advantage of the freshman missing it wide to the right, or pushing it to the right, I should say, and they'll take over at the 30-yard line. There he goes. He just does push it to the right side. He had plenty of distance, but it missed probably by seven or eight yards to the right side. Normally, a soccer kicker will hook it a little bit. There was no hook on that football. 
First and 10 for the Salukis now at the 25 yard, at, right at the 30, right there at the 20, I'm sorry. Samberski to Turner. He breaks into the secondary. Picks up about eight. Southern needs to put together about an 80 yard drive here. Well, that's one way to start it. Just get right in behind those big guys up front and let them do the pushing. And Craig Turner doing a good job getting about eight yards on that play. Second down and two. Craig Turner with eight carries for 44 yards on the night and a touchdown. Brent Little and Kellen Allen come wide to the left side. It's a good shot of Jerry Kill, Saluki football coach. Turner again. Oh, man, lots of room. He could go. Nobody's going to catch Craig Turner, I don't think. He's got the speed. He's, He's going to go. <laughs> touchdown, Southern Illinois. 72 yard touchdown run by Craig Turner and the Salukis capitalize on the 80 yard drive. I wanted it to take about four more minutes, <laughs> we'll, we'll take but we'll that take it. Score. Wow, does he have a burst of speed. But watch this, he sells it up front and then comes off to the left side, finds the open lane, and from there this is just Craig Turner. Outruns about three or four defenders. Another guy has one shot to trip him up. Craig, a good job to keeping his legs going. Touchdown, Southern. Pretty good angle by Trocantampo, but even he couldn't get Craig Turner. So Coffin on to try the extra point. He may have pushed that. No, he got it right through. And the Salukis with the touchdown. Up their lead to 14 points with 7.17 left to go in the second quarter. Southern 17, Western Illinois 3. We'll be back after this. The 72 yard run by Craig Turner puts him over 100 yards. He's got 116 yards on nine carries. More importantly, the Salukis are now up by two touchdowns. It's 17 to three as Coffin tees it up at the 35 yard line. It'll be Paul Anderson at the seven. He's got a wall, but a block in the back on the play right at the 27 yard line, 22 yard line. And a good tackle down there by Kyle Corborn. Like we talked a little bit at the beginning, we'll see what this call is here. We'll get a call from our head referee. Holding on the return. See if we can see it here. Had a good wall set up. And Kyle Colborn comes in and stabs at it with the left hand. Illegal block Craig. in the back on the return. Number 28. Weston that will back him up to the 10. Craig Turner, the 72-yard touchdown. That's his career long. And you know, if he can keep running like that, they'll leave Whitlock out for this whole game. Let him rest up, let him get healthy. Things get a little scary with both of those guys exploding like they can. No question. Then you still have the very capable Antoine Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. Who can gain you some great yards. So Western Illinois to start back on its own 10-yard line. And it's Glassford off the left side. Stood up and down after a gain of about two, and the linebacker core did its job on that play. Tony Ranella stood Glassford up at the 12 yard line. There's Tony right there, number 55, making the initial contact and taking down Travis Glassford. Glassford has eight carries for about 36 or 37 yards. Good eyes by Ranella just to stay with Glassford, so I'm cutting back toward him and made the tackle. LaFalse, back to pass. Hits Marco Thomas. And he can do things after he catches the football. Gets yardage across the 20, out to about the 23, maybe the 24. Good enough for a Western Illinois first down. Marco Thomas has been the best thing they've got going. Good speed by Thomas, and it was Frank Johnson over there to try to make the play, but Thomas just spins around, makes a cut, and gets by Frank Johnson. And it's tough with, with your momentum going that way toward the toward, uh, out of bounds and to turn quickly when Thomas knows what he wants to do in a defensive back. You don't know which way he's going, but Frank Johnson playing about 90%. It's got to be real tough for Frank to turn on that ankle on a play like that. New front four into the game on the salute for the Salukis on defense on first and 10 now for the Leathernecks. Quick pass to the right side, and again it's Marco Thomas. 
And again, he spins. He's running backwards. Now he's going to go across the field. Royal Whitaker got taken out, and Marco Thomas might score. How about Brashear? There is a flag right, right at the 50 field yard and line. And also one laying back near had to the be line a, of scrimmage. Had to be a couple of blocks in the back. This one's coming back, folks. Well, Thomas had a clear shot as soon as he could reverse field. It's going to come right at you. Thomas, number 11, making the catch. The entire Saluki defense coming this way, coming to their left. And now with the reverse of the field of Thomas, everyone has to shift and go back. One Saluki defender, I believe it's number 36 here, had a shot. And then Brad Rashier just hustling down the field, making the play. But we do have some flags. They're conferring at about the 32-yard line. There's so still a flag down at the 50, so. Have to see what, what happens here. I think I'm just guessing here because where the play took place, the line of scrimmage was the 23-yard line. If that block occurred downfield, the, the, the bad block, then it's definitely. Well, two flags. The first flag is going to be waved off. However, we do have a block in the back. There is a block in the back at midfield. So they'll take it back to the 40-yard line. Here's the spin move again by Marco Thomas. I'm still trying to figure out why they took the one call back. Because it was 10 yards downfield. There was the other one. And watch Brashear come out of nowhere. And Brashear may be the fastest guy on the Saluki football team. Certainly showing some speed there. State champion in high school for the Harrisburg Bulldogs. And now we're getting another explanation. The block against number 18 is really legal. That flag is on too. Well, now every flag is. <laughs> so disregard both flags. <laughs> and Brashear does trip up Thomas. And they'll walk it all the way up to where he was down, which looks like about the nine yard line. And I bet Jerry Kill's uh, pretty excited about those two calls being called back. And here comes an explanation. Yeah, here. One that he's not going to like. I don't care what it is. Yeah, Jerry doesn't look too happy. And for good reason. He's going to throw. He's going to say he was talked out of it. That he was talked out of both flags. And how can a how can a block be legal when it when a flag was thrown? <laughs> Jerry's hot. And the referee Frump is talking it over with Jerry Kill. And there's a great shot of Coach Kill in his fifth year with the Salukis, 28 and 23 overall at Southern. So the Leathernecks get credit for the play. And all of a sudden, Marco Thomas has 152 yards receiving. And it's a career high for Thomas. Small crowd here today, Mike, at Hanson Field. It is. At 14,000 last week, of course, that was homecoming in Northern Iowa was here. Western playing four straight ranked teams in one double A. The one, the one good thing the delay did is it gave the Saluki defense a chance to catch its breath. and. Try to start anew here on first and ten at the nine. Western cannot get a first down. Here comes a blitz. Picked up. Split. Touchdown. Carl Sims, the wide receiver on the slant pattern, catches the quick slant from the false on the nine yard play. And Western Illinois answers Craig Turner's 80 yard drive with an 80 yard drive of their own. The boss knew he had to get rid of it quickly and the, again the good slant pattern by Sims. Gonna push it back to a one touchdown lead for Southern after the extra point here. So Rowan is on to try the extra point. He's hit 23 consecutive. Two away from playing the uh, leatherneck record for a freshman. Kick is up. It is good. We've got 532 left to go in the second quarter of play. It's the Saluki 17, Western Illinois 10. Dad and I will be back. You're watching Saluki football on Mediacom. We're back at Hanson Field. It's 17 to 10 now, Southern Illinois over Western Illinois. The Saluki is looking for their fourth win in a row over the Leathernecks. 
Rowan has it teed up at the 35 yard line. Rennell Thomas and Craig Turner back to catch the football for the Super Beast. It's a chipper. Fair catch by Alan Turner at the 40 yard line. So Southern will. There's an offsides call against Western, but I think Southern will decline that penalty and take the ball at the 40. Here we go. Interesting kickoff. Straight up into the air. Kellen Allen calling for the fair catch. A Turner. Allen Turner. Or Turner. Uh, offsides was the call on Western Illinois, but I think Southern will decline it because they'll take the ball at the 40. A smart play by Turner, though, because that way he calls the fair catch. All he has to do is concentrate on the ball. The Don't worry about Western. They're coming at you. By rule, five yards from the end of the kick. Excuse me, the end of the run. First down. an extra five yards on the offside play. Mark Weeble talking things over with a couple of the Saluki defensive linemen. Most notably, number 92, Linton Brown. So Southern will start at the 45-yard line. Great field position. And we'll try to answer the Western Illinois touchdown. A lot of scoring in this football game. In motion goes Allen. Turner goes nowhere. Really, game about half yard to the 45 and a half. It'll be second down. Joel Samberski is still just one for three in the football game. So we said run, 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 and the one pass he completed was to Micah Turner. And that was good for 33 yards. So it's second down and a long nine now for the Salukis. Joel all day to pass. Overthrows Brent Little and he had him from here to north of Macomb and Joel missed him. He was wide open. Just an overthrow by Joel. And you know, he's only thrown the it's only his fourth pass yeah. of the game. So maybe got a little excited, but yeah, you're right. Brent, if he just turns one way or he just gets a burst of speed, but Joel just overthrows him, but he had him. He, had, he had six points right there. Now the Salukis have to hustle to get this one in. 15 seconds now on the play clock. It's third down and nine. A first down would quell some of the momentum that Western had after that last drive. Faking a blitz, now they come. Joel goes down at the 40. A loss of five on the play, maybe six. It's just a, a quick penetration by the Leatherneck defense. And uh, they throw those goofy schemes. You can see some of the linebackers setting up. They, they act like they're gonna blitz. They finally come and Joel just nowhere to go in that pocket. And good coverage downfield too. Piana Lukabu, one of the defensive linemen on the tackle, on the sack. That's the second time Joel's gone down via the sack tonight. And Kettle Camp will have to punt it back to Western Illinois. And another stoppage of play. And the Gateway Conference officials will do what they do best, and that is huddle. <laughs> well, if you're Western, this is what you want. 4.18 to go right before halftime. And you've got some momentum. You've been moving the ball against the Saluki defense. Down 17 to 10. Get a few big plays again. Tie this thing up. 20 will be the time on the clock. Add in a couple more seconds. So the clock has been an issue here. Jerry Kill wanted some offensive consistency in this football game. And while they've scored quickly, they haven't sustained any drives. They haven't pushed the chains. They've either scored or not made first downs. Kettle Camp on to punt once again. Zach with kicking it is 32. This one's going to be possibly returnable by Reggie Gray. And but Brashear says no thank you. And we nails him at the 22. I think that number 18 for Western Illinois, Carl Sims, didn't want to get a penalty, so he let Brad go. Yeah. And we've seen Gray twice now. Not afraid to either just call a fair catch or let the ball roll. And we'll see it again here if uh, Brashear just kind of breaks free. I think you're right, Mike. Sims did not want to commit a block in the back. Good timing by Brad, though, waiting until he catches the ball. And as soon as he did, Brad was right in there to make the tackle. There he is, number 33, Brad Brashear, the senior out of Harrisburg, has three interceptions on the year, one of them for a 79-yard touchdown play at Western Michigan, Western Michigan a few weeks ago. Wide to the right side comes Paul Anderson. 
for the false who's already got a ton of passing yards 209 yards that's Reggie Gray busted up for a gain of about three maybe four and somebody lost their helmet I'm not sure if it was Gray it was Reggie Reggie was dehelmetized on that play hard hit like Marlon Easton might have delivered that one for seven and watch it again they just want to get Gray the ball with a chance to make something happen after the catch I think when he got hit his feet were still moving forward but the rest of it went backwards including his helmet so it's second down and a long six Play clock down to 10. Game clock is down to 340 and counting. Play action. Fake the reverse. Glassford's open. They can't get it to him. He was out of bounds on the play. Give Southern credit in the defensive backfield. The false had nowhere to go. Finally saw Glassford, but they didn't bite on any of the nope. fakes. Nope. Kept the pressure on and good coverage by Marlon Heaston on Glassford as Glassford came all the way across the field. There's the fake to Gray on the reverse. Now LaFalse gets pushed out of there. Sees Glassford break free. And then Marlon Heaston with great coverage on the play. So it's third and long. Five Saluki defenders back there. They also had Thomas covered up the middle of the field. Gray is in the slot to the right. LaFalse wants to get rid of it. He can't. There's nobody open. Finally sees his receiver open. Penalty marker down back at the 31. There's another marker at the 31. The yardage was good enough for the first down to Reggie Gray, but we have to see what happens. Western an eligible receiver downfield against Western Illinois. So bring it back. And that'll happen when you're scrambling around trying to buy time. Good job by the senior Gray to get open. The amazing thing was the false made no attempt to even try to run that football. I can't believe one of the linemen was downfield that much. But one of them was. That'd be Boomer Moore, the tight end. I think he's eligible. <laughs> so it's third down and about 11 now for the Leathernecks. Western is out of timeouts. The play clock is down to 10 seconds. So they got to hustle to get this one in. And the false doesn't seem to be in any kind of a hurry. But he gets it off. They need 11. And he's hammered. On the outside, I think it's Jeff Jones. Number 52. Yep. From his right end spot. And LaFalse could feel him at the last <laughs> second and duck for his life. Well, that's what happens. Again, give credit to Southern's defensive backs. Nowhere for LaFalse to throw, even after the fake. And yeah, he can just do nothing but go down. Jeff Jones right over the top of LaFalse. Now Southern can get the ball back with about two minutes to go. There's, There's Jeff Jones right there, number 52. Likeable senior. Craig Turner back to receive the punt at the 44 yard line. And there goes the punter. There's a flag. Don't touch it if you're Southern. See if it's a personal foul. Ball goes out of bounds at the 35. Yeah. Don't know if it's going to be a personal foul or a five yarder. Right where Chris Coffey, the punter, was is where the flag's laying. So. Southern ran into it. Just him. comes down to whether it's a personal foul or not. Offsides against Southern. Personal foul, roughing the kicker against Southern. And I think Western Illinois will take the second penalty. Automatic first down for Western Illinois, and that hurts. It was fourth and 21. Under two minutes to go in the half. Southern would have had the ball back. And now Western gets it back, and they can go into their two-minute offense. two fouls on the defense. They have offsides. That penalty's declined. And a personal foul, roughing the kicker. Number three, it's 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Thomas Lang gets hit with the roughing the uh, personal foul, roughing the kicker penalty. They had pressure, but they got too much of the kicker to call it running into the kicker. Now Western gets an automatic first down out at the 29 yard line and renewed life right before halftime here. 
You did point out that they have no timeouts. Still two minutes to work with, but see if they start working the outside of the field, going to Gray or Thomas. Even Glassford sending him out of the backfield. Great hands from the senior running back as well. Douglas and Glassford are split behind the false on first down. Everybody out in the pattern. Here comes the screen pass to Douglas. And a great individual tackle by Jamarcus Jordan. And why'd they call timeout? Southern take a timeout? I believe Jordan did signal for a timeout after he came up after the tackle. Now here's another flag, a late flag thrown Un by the linesman. And that'll be an unsportsmanlike conduct against somebody, I would think. There's Don Patterson in the blue jacket across the way for Western Illinois. I guess that's purple as Western Illinois' colors. Here's Frump, the referee. Beneath the flag, all who sit on the field to start a seven-man line. It's a legal play. It's a legal play, so they better start the clock up again. And it's second down and about 11. So the bad flag costs the Salukis about 15 or 20 seconds on defense. Second and long. Reggie Gray in the slot to the right. The false over the middle. Gain of about six on the play. That's Boomer Moore, the tight end. And it's third down and six now for Western. And they're in no hurry now as the clock is at 115, 114. If Southern can stop them here, they'll take a timeout. They have two. All kinds of changes going on. If they let this run all the way out, there will be 50 seconds left on the clock right about when they snap the ball. Patrick Jordan just comes into the football game for Linton Brown on third and six. The false, he's going to run it on the draw, and he gets the first down. They're going to have to hurry and get set. Clock ticking to 46 and stopped while they move the chains. Barring a turnover now, Southern assured itself that it won't get the ball back. And Western Illinois will get either a field goal try or they'll try to get a touchdown. Sims comes wide to the right. Play action pass. Over the middle, it's Sims. Gain of about 15 on the play. LaFalce could have taken his pick on that one. Both Sims and Gray were wide open up the middle of the field, but I think Southern's protecting the out of bounds. 26 seconds left. They got to get down to about the 20 to have a legitimate shot and a field goal try for Taylor Rowan. And they just spiked the ball to bring up second and 10 at the 41 yard line with 24 seconds left here in the half. Again, coming up at halftime, Assistant Athletic Director Mark Scali will join Thad after we do some halftime information for you. They come back with three, four wide receivers. Reggie Gray, Marco Thomas, Carl Sims, and Paul Anderson all in the game now for Western Illinois. On second and 10, they tried to call timeout. They didn't have a timeout. <laughs> so they're going to get a delay at least. Here's Frump. Red ball. Play a game against the offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. The freshman kicker, Taylor Rowan, for this Leathernecks team in high school hit 245 yarders. They still got a ways to go getting Rowan's range, and they're backing up. The false getting heat from Lorenzo Wims. There's a fumble. The ball's kicked. And it's third down. Lorenzo Wims on the... Uh, on the rush that time for the Salukis, causing the fumble by the false. Called his name several times today. 16 seconds left in the half.
The ball was kicked forward. We'll see what's happening here. Here's by the offense, number nine, 15-yard penalty, loss of down. And I believe when the ball was on the ground, LaFalse was laying there, and he reached out, and he's the one that either bunched it, it or forward. kicked it at four. Yeah. So it's 15-yard loss of down. It's third down. This half won't end. 16 <laughs> seconds to go. It's a loss of down. So Southern could still take a timeout and force them into a fourth down situation and try to block another punt. Yeah, the false won't be able to just sit on it. He's in the shotgun right now. Three wide receivers to the right. Here comes a blitz. Whitaker nails him. No, he can't. Get, yes, he does. Six seconds, five seconds. The Salukis are not going to call timeout. They are going to let the clock run out. So they could have called timeout and forced them to run one more play, but they decide against it. And it's been kind of a back and forth football game, but Southern has the lead at the end of one half of play. It's Southern Illinois 17, Western Illinois 10. Thad and I will be back with halftime information for you when we return after these messages. Mike Trude back with you along with Thad Jackson. It's halftime, the Western Illinois marching band on the field. The Salukis lead it by a score of 17 to 10. I want to remind you that the halftime show is being brought to you by 17th Street Barn Grill in Marion and Murfreesboro. Enjoy their world famous barbecue at home. Call ahead and we'll have it ready or let us cater your next party at 17th Street Bar and Grill. This has been a very interesting first half statistics wise and I want to remind you that the first half stats are also sponsored by Mikey B's Bleacher Bums, Southern Illinois home of Topps 2005 NFL turn back the clock promotion. And passing statistics, Joel Samberski, one out of four for 33 yards. Southern said they were going to run, run, run the football, and his, his uh, counterpart, LaFalse, has 234 yards passing. Uh, Craig Turner has uh, 114 yards rushing out of the 116 that Southern has gained in the game. Actually, Craig has 117, and Joel is minus three. Western Illinois has only 46 yards rushing. Turnovers, none for Southern, one for Western Illinois. Third down conversions, two out of nine for the Leathernecks. The Salukis, 0 for four. Time of possession is the amazing thing, 2107 to 853. And the other amazing stat that isn't on here, Western Illinois has run 47 offensive plays. The Salukis that have only run 18 offensive plays have only had the ball in a little under nine minutes, yet they're leading the football game by a touchdown. <laughs> it is amazing. When you look at these stats, you think whether, uh, Western would be leading up on the scoreboard, but it's Southern that has scored so quickly. And the, the play by Craig Turner to lead to the first touchdown is one or two yard plunge into the end zone, and then the quick touchdown again. And that's why Southern's time of possession is about nine minutes. And again, they've only run 18 plays to the 47 for Western. Amazing. It is amazing. Yep. On the scoreboard is where it counts, and the Salukis lead the Leathernecks by a score of 17 to 10. We are about six minutes away from kickoff here to start the third quarter, and Thad and I will be back after these messages. Go ahead. Take a look at the first half highlights. It started off with uh, Craig Turner for the Salukis, capping a 25-yard Saluki drive with this two-yard touchdown run. Turner accounted for all 25 yards on the drive. It was 7-0 SIU. The Salukis' other touchdown play came on a long Craig Turner touchdown run. This one, 72 yards in the making as he breaks a tackle right there. And a last-second dive he also got through. Craig Coffin also added a 43-yard field goal to accumulate the Saluki 17 points. Taylor Rowan hit a 27-yard field goal in the first quarter. That cut the lead at the time to 7-3 SIU. And then with 5.32 to go in the first half, LaFalse to Sims, a nine-yard touchdown. And that's where we stand, 17-10 with five and a half. That was at the 5.32 mark of the second quarter. And both teams are back on the field. And we will get this uh, second half started when we come back right after this.
We're about a minute away from the kickoff here in the second half. I want to remind you that the halftime show was brought to you by 17th Street Bar and Grill in Marion and Murfreesboro. Enjoy their world-famous barbecue at home. Call ahead and we'll have it ready or let us cater your next party at 17th Street Bar and Grill. Some of the best barbecue, not only in Southern Illinois, but in the United States. Award-winning barbecue at 17th Street. Brent Little getting a stretch there on the sidelines for the Saluki. Southern will be on offense to start the second half. They won the coin toss at the uh, beginning of the football game and deferred to the second half. There is no wind in the stadium, so wind was not a factor. Uh, the reason being is just Southern wanted to have the option in the second half to do what they thought was best for their team at the time, and they are going to be on offense to start the second half. And let's see if they can run a little more time off the clock. They've obviously been patient on their offense, but they've scored rather quickly. Their two scoring drives were three plays and two plays on the touchdowns, and then the field goal drive was about a six-play drive. So they've only had the ball for 18 total plays on offense. As we mentioned, Western Illinois has had the ball for 47 plays on offense. So we'll see what happens here in the second half if Southern can reverse that trend and put together some sustained drives, some, some consistent drives, the things that Coach Kill is looking for and was looking for in the walkthrough yesterday when they practice here on Hanson Field. You'd like to see him just get into a rhythm, get, let Sam Bersky get comfortable back there behind center, runs, passes, mix it up, and just kind of get into that rhythm and march their way down the field here. About to get the ball back. See if they kick it deep. They do kick it deep. This will be Rennell Thomas at the goal line. He's got a head of steam. And if he can get to the outside, there's a marker down. Thomas is going to be knocked out of the 21-yard line. Pushed rather hard, about four yards out of bounds. But a marker at the 21, which in all likelihood is a block in the back. And they'll take it back to about the 11-yard uh, line where Southern will start first and 10. Not a good way to start the second half of the penalty. Good job by Thomas reversing the ball, reversing hands, putting it to his outside hand on the left. The defender pursuing him from the inside. Let's see what the call is here. Flag picked up, and again they threw it right kind of where the uh, the big pile was before Thomas reversed the angle. Here's the call. Holding on the return. Number 15, 10 yards to spot the foul. First down. Call that against Kyle Colburn, I believe, for Southern. Push him back to the 11. So it's first and 10 for the Salukis at the 11 yard line. JT Wise and Craig Turner are in the backfield. Turner up the gut. He lost the football. Huge pile. Still waiting for the signal. Clock is stopped. And Southern has the ball. Somehow, some way, Turner, I think, or Micah Turner, the Turner brothers, although they're not related, came up with that football after a gain of about nine. I Woo. never saw the ball there. I saw Turner lose it, yeah, and then it kind of bounced around. Looked like Micah jumped on, in on it. Good awareness and the Southern tight end. Good break for Southern. And now what's the discussion? Need a uh, play clock for the officials. I think they're going to mess with the clock again and reset some time. It's at 1430. I was chatting with with Mike Reese during uh, while you were interviewing Mark Scally and mm -hmm. he said that seemed to be the most disorganized quarter of football meaning the second quarter that he's ever seen in his 26 years of or 27 years of calling Saluki football. There was no flow to the quarter. The officials, the officials kept putting time back on, taking flags off, discussing every single play that happened, and neither team was able to get into, a, in mu into much of a flow. What they did there, Mike, they added three seconds on the clock. So from 14.30, you have 14.33. Okay, thank you. That was Turner's 11th carry of the ball game. Doing a brunt of the work here for Southern's offense. All of it. They've now run 19 total plays, and he's got 11 of them. So it's second and one. Two receivers to the left. 
carry looks like it'll be close to the first down. Mike, I think that was Antoine Jackson in the backfield. Turner's over here on the sideline probably getting a breather. I think yeah, he got popped pretty time. good. Fred got popped pretty good on that uh, carry as well. So that was Antoine Jackson, good for a first down. And the drive continues at the Saluki 22. Again, Arky Whitlock is available in uniform, but nursing an injury. Brent Little wide to the left side. He was wide open on a, on a pass earlier that Joel overthrew. Here comes Antoine. Hard yard, still driving, still driving, gains about five. We were talking about yards after contact is what Southern needed to take care of. You see Antoine getting hit by about five leather necks there, but boy, he's a punishing runner. 5'8", 190 pounds, here he goes. Heads right back into the defensive secondary, number 24, Curtis, or Wyatt Green, the linebacker, and carried him a couple of yards. So it's second down and about five for the Salukis. Corey Payne wide to the left now with Kellen Allen in the slot on the left. Here comes Western all out. Corey Payne can't hang on to the ball. He planted his feet, it slipped, and he couldn't reverse his field to make the catch. It's gonna be third down. Ball thrown a little bit behind him, but Corey was already trying to turn and come back to the ball. You see Joel coming right at you, number 22 into your screen. Corey just trying to reverse and cut back out of his hands. Another incompletion. It'll be third and five. Southern would like to convert here, get something going, getting into a flow on offense. Get into a rhythm, as Jerry called it yesterday. They bring the house. It's caught for the first down by Alan Turner out on the right side. Just enough yardage for the first down. Good job by Turner, good field awareness. Just about a, a yard past the first down marker. Joel with a little bit of time. And Turner open. And, uh, wide receivers coach Brian uh, Anderson said, Southern needs to go to the ball. Don't wait for it to come to them. And Turner with a good job there of going and getting the ball. Turner's eighth catch of the year for the Salukis. Good for the first down. Showing blitz. Punishing Craig Turner across the 35, out to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line. Well, you'd think Southern's offense would be a little fresher after only having nine minutes of uh, time <laughs> possession in the first half. Second down and a long six. Good bruising run there by Craig Turner. In motion goes Chris Kupek. Give it to Turner again. Fumbled again. That one is recovered by uh, Western. Number nine on the recovery for the Leathernecks. Back, uh, Robert Hodges. He does wear the same number as the quarterback of the Falls. Well, Turner with two fumbles, one that Southern recovered. Now this one that Western gets, and they'll be at the 35. Craig really got popped on the shoulder, too. And Lee Land, the Saluki trainer, is helping Craig down on the Saluki sideline. So let's see what Western Illinois can do with the turnover. First turnover for the Saluki is each team with a turnover now. LaFalse on offense for the first time here in the second half. Play action pass. Looking downfield, wide open, Marco Thomas can't make the catch. Good coverage over there by number 36 for the Salukis, Clayton Johnson. Second and 10, an all day to throw for the Falls, who already has over 200 yards passing in the game. 234. Clayton Johnson, Frank Johnson, Brashear, Jamarcus Jordan and Marlon Heaston all in the backfield for the Salukis as they play a 4-2-5. Reggie Gray in the slot to the right. The false getting pushed out of the pocket, being chased. Billy Beard 
can't catch up with it. And LaFalse just throws it long and hard and far. Mike, I'm watching the Saluki sideline here. You talked about Craig Turner. He really got hit, and Lee Land is still working with him. But I'm getting a view now of Arkey Whitlock, and running backs coach Rob Reeves is over there huddling up with his backs, and Whitlock. He's strapping on the shoulder yep. pads, isn't he? Yep. We said he's available. But boy, if, if you didn't have to use him today, but they're going to need him this game. Third and 10 now for Western Illinois. Southern's had decent pressure on the false throughout this game. Here they come again, and he's going down. Lionel Williams back at the 44-yard line. And that's just straight pressure from the front four. And LaFalle's nowhere to go. He kind of stepped up into the pressure and everything collapsing around him. And part of that big collapse you're going to see is number 94, Lionel Williams. And once he gets a hold of you, LaFalle's nowhere. Look at Lionel fighting off his defender, knows where he wants to go, gets LaFalle's and, and the takedown. So Alan Turner now back to return the punt. Is Craig Turner not available? Punter is Chris Coffey. All day to kick it. High, over to the left, shanked it a little bit. And it's going to go out of bounds at about the 15 or 14 yard line. So the Salukis will take over possession. Good job by the defense to thwart Western after they got the turnover. And Southern still leads at 17 to 10. They'll go on offense now. Antoine Jackson will still be in the backfield for the Salukis. Greg Turner, who had the makings of a wonderful game, 14 carries, 132 yards, and a couple of touchdowns, but two fumbles in the last three carries doesn't sit well with Jerry Kill, and he also popped his shoulder on the last fumble. So Southern starts first and 10 at about the 15-yard line. Here comes Antoine. Ball start on the Salukis, and it's too bad because Antoine had the corner made, but somebody jumped for the Salukis on the right side. Greg Turner's sitting here, we'll get the call after a conference, I'm sure. Greg Turner's sitting on the southern sideline, helmet off. Dead ball, false start, number 84 on the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Please reset the game clock to 11 15. Got to add some seconds again. Three more seconds go back on the clock. Watch the right side. Micah just steps up right before the snap. So it's first and 15. Give it to Antoine on the left side. Gain of maybe a yard or two. It'll bring up second down. Alvy Armstrong, the equipment manager for Southern, was working with our key Whitlock on the sidelines, and Whitlock was stretching out his legs, getting his gloves on, and still trying to get loose. He's been standing there for an entire half, and it, it's not real warm here in Macomb today. Play clock, play clock is at 15. Second down and a long 13, call it 14 for, for the Salukis. In motion goes Kupek to the right side, now gets in his stance. Here comes the blitz. Pass complete to Brent Little out at the 22, maybe the 23 yard line. It's gonna be third down and short now. And Southern got back about 10 or 11 of those yards. So now they need a play of about three yards to keep the drive alive and get that consistency we talked about. If you want Sam Bursky to get going, have him throw it to Brent Little. He's been his go-to guy for several years. He's a senior, and Little a good job to come back to that ball. Defender not giving him the first down, so Southern will take what they can and out short yardage for the first down. Here comes the blitz. Knocked down by number 56 at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Darren Boone, defensive lineman, got his big right paw up to knock that down, and the Salukis have to punt it away. Here it is again. Western brings a lot of guys up the middle. Antoine Jackson trying to get the block on uh, the defensive player for Western. That was uh, Boone that you said. 
Boone. Good job by Boone. Getting his hands up, deflecting the pass. It's fourth down. So Western should get pretty decent field position. Kettle camp back to punt on his six yard line. See how quickly Brashear can get down there this time. Nice kick, turns over nicely for Reggie Gray. Oh. And Gray's going to reverse his field. Now he's going to have to reverse it again. He's going to run into a wall of trouble. And he got to the 37 yard line. So he really gained no yardage at all once he received that football. And Western Illinois will start first and 10 from its own 38. Nice defensive pursuit by the Salukis on the punt. A good job of everybody staying in their lanes and watching Gray. If we if we could, he tried to reverse to his left first and then came back to his right and thought about going back again. But Southern had every lane filled with Gray nowhere to go and eventually string him out to the sideline. So a lot of nothing so far here in the third quarter. 9.32 left to go. Western will start first and 10 from its own. Call it the 39 yard line. Wide to the right, number 81, Paul Anderson. Top of the screen is number 18, Carl Sims. They give it to Glassford. He spins away and will gain a couple of yards up to maybe the 41 yard line. And Travis Glassford started hot, but now nine carries, 39 yards. So he started quickly in this one, but hasn't been much of the offense since. It's been the short passing game from the falls to his wide receivers. Here's Glassford again. Tries to spin away, and the pursuit has been there tonight for the Salukis. We talked about that being a key before the game, and Southern's done a good job of containing Travis Glassford out of the backfield. Justin Lowe's in on the tackle for the Salukis on that particular play. Second down and eight. The false back to pass. There's some pressure. Hit, maybe a fumble. It is a fumble. Can Southern get the ball? No, I think Doesn't Western like got it. Had about four guys with a shot out of it at it. And Mike, how many times have we called Lorenzo Winfrey? Southern saying they have it. We'll see. The referee pointed down immediately that it was Western's ball, so I think it's Western's ball. Boy, Whitaker had a shot at it. Wims after he made the hit, and the false was going to throw the ball here. Oh, Wims just lays a hit on him, and that ball laid there for about five seconds, maybe more, and it squirts out again. Whitaker, the last one in there, the number 34. Cox got it. Cox, the center, made it. Well, this is similar to what Southern did on their first possession. Now it's third down and about 22 for Western Illinois. Make it 27, they're calling it. The ball's at the 27. Southern came in with an even turnover margin and just lost the fumble earlier. Western had, has a minus nine turnover ratio. Lucky to get that one back. Third and 23. And he's not going to get it. It'll be fourth down. They do make the reception. Good for a gain of about 13. But it's going to be fourth down. And now Western's going to have to punt the ball back to the Saluki. So neither team can get anything going on offense here in this half. And we mentioned Western coming into this game gives up an average of 39 points a game. Saluki's only have 17. So they've improved a lot on their defense from last week to this week. Alan Turner back to catch the punt on the 15 yard line. Coffey will punt it away at about the 32. Shanks it off to his right side. Oh, it gets a nice western roll though out of bounds at the 18. That turned out much better. Not a great looking punt off of Coffey's foot. Does get the bounce and the roll. Those are always scary when you have your uh, when you're southern when you have your back to the ball and you just want to get out of the way. The ball eventually drifts towards the sideline. So we'll see what happens here. Whoever gets some offensive consistency going may have a chance to win this football game because the defenses are bowing up now and making some stops, making some nice plays on both sides of the ball. Salukis so with one wide receiver, Kellen Allen to the right side. Give it to Antoine. He gets up to about the 18, maybe the 19 yard line. It'll be second down and it's run, run, run again for the Salukis. Yeah, and uh, Rob Reeves alluded to before this game, they'll do that. They'll just keep running up the middle, punching it up the middle, following their blockers, and then eventually you'll see the running back take those two steps, sell it up the middle, and then cut off the left side right off the tackle. Brent Little comes in now. We've mentioned just about 
every time Brent wants to go deep, he can go deep and get open. Looks like single coverage on Brent Little to the left side as well. If Joel can get some time. Oh, he doesn't have any time, though. He's going to have to run for his life. Craig Turner, or Little comes back. He got pushed in the back. No call, and it's intercepted. Eventually up the field is Jared, Jared Green, guard for Southern, making the tackle, the interception by J.D. Dean, who was covering Little. You're right, Mike, he got pushed. So another turnover. Here it is again. Joel scrambling, you'll see Little push right in the back, which caused the ball to deflect right into Dean's hands. They may say it was uncatchable, which would make it incidental contact, but Nothing at all was called, so it's first down Western Illinois at the 31 yard line. Here come the Leathernecks after J.D. Dean makes the interception. The false quarterback draw gets hammered at the 30 yard line. And Southern's done a nice job of stopping that play. As Jamarcus Jordan again back there with the initial contact and the tackle on the false. Here it is again. It's a planned play. And just Jamarcus hit him behind the line and the false struggled to get up to the 30. Gain of about one, second and nine. Jamarcus Jordan and Frank Johnson, the senior safeties. Marlon Easton, Brad Brashear, Easton a junior, Brashear another senior. The Salukis do lead this 17-10. It just doesn't appear like it right now. That's a bounce pass to Reggie Gray. And Frank Johnson just labeled him at the 28-yard line. And Gray and Johnson both telling each other. You know, that was a hard hit, but he, both of them popping back up. And Frank Johnson can hit hard. And as soon as Gray bobbles it, Johnson has a clear shot. Gray right in the front of your screen. And Frank Johnson's going to meet him right there. <laughs> that's, that's a hit. Third down and seven now for Western Illinois. Wow, what a hit by Frank Johnson. Boy, it's good to see Frank in the game. And Doyle is trying to fire up the defense right now. Third down and long. Quick slant. First down, Reggie Gray. Gray getting underneath the coverage and knew right where the first down marker was. Big third down play for Western. Here it is again. Just a quick two-step drop. And there he is, Reggie Gray. Right in between the defenders. Royal Whitaker on the tackle. He got in between Jamarcus and Royal. So it's first down Leathernecks. The ball's at the 16-yard line. Last time they had it this deep, they did score. Give it to Glassford. Not much there. And to Travis's. He has not put it on the ground yet tonight, and he is fumble prone. And Glassford has not fumbled tonight. He gained four on the play. Well, and he's making people miss. Watch initially in this first pile, there's about two or three Salukis that have a shot at him, but good containment by Southern. Second down and long. To the left goes Jarrell Johnson along with Paul Anderson. Marco Thomas is to the right. Give it to Glassford. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of three on the play. And now it's a long third down again for Western Illinois. For every yard Glassford gains, he seems to lose a couple on the next carry. And it's third and eight. Back in comes Carl Sims. It's third down and eight. The ball's at the 15-yard line. Shotgun formation. Looking left, it's Reggie Gray. That's the same play they ran earlier. First down yardage to the five. Reggie's seventh catch on the night for about 51 yards. Right there, right in front. 
And it's first and goal from the five. Western is threatening to tie this game up. Their red zone offense scores about 68% of the time. They've made two field goals, but have run 10 of them in, thrown five in. Red zone offense for Western. And they have to call a timeout. Western, confused on offense, calls a timeout. 250 left to go in the third quarter. The Salukis lead it 17 to 10. That now will be back after this. Here we go. It's first and goal from the five. LaFalse. This is where he likes to throw that slant. He goes outside to Reggie Gray. And little or no gain on the play. Just a timing pattern from the falls to Gray. You see Gray turn around, and the ball's already waiting for him, but so was Jamarcus Jordan. So it's second down and goal. They gave him a gain of about a half yard. It's second and goal from the four. This is where Southern's defense tightened up a week ago against Missouri State. See if they can do it here. They love to run those slants to these wide receivers. Shotgun. Quick drop, looking deep, touchdown. Western Illinois to Carl Sims again, who is working man coverage from Clayton Johnson. They're an extra point away from tying this football game up. He looked right, looked right, looked right, and then flew back, threw it back to Clayton Sims, who was working on Clayton Johnson. As Sims heads to the far corner of the end zone, and Johnson never gets his eyes on the ball, Sims going up to get it. Touchdown, Leatherneck. Four-yard touchdown. And Rowan has a chance to tie the game up here in the third quarter. 24 consecutive point after tries for the freshman. Make it 25, and now he's tied for the most consecutive PATs by a freshman in the Western record book. We 17. got a brand new ball game, 17-17. Back with the kickoff after this. Steve LaFalse to Sims has tied this game up 17 all with 2.06 left to go in the third quarter. Rowan set to kick it off and he chops it up high again. Fair catch called four and caught at the 33 yard line. Philip Doyle on the catch and the Saluki's offense will go to war. Want to remind you that our next Mediacom broadcast of Saluki football will come November 12th when the Salukis travel to Cedar Falls to take on Northern Iowa, the Panthers. And Northern Iowa again lost today at, at Missouri State. And people were hoping that that one was going to turn out to be a game for the conference championship. Still could, but we'll be on the air November 12th from Cedar Falls with the Salukis and Panthers of Northern Iowa. Here we go. Craig Turner is back in the backfield for the Salukis. Drives it up to the 35 yard line, and the Leathernecks went in at halftime and said, no more running. So maybe Joel's going to have to open things up a little bit in the air. Brent Little comes back in the football game. Here's Turner's run right into the heart of that defensive line of Western Illinois. Mike, you just talked about it during the commercial break about Turner being back in there. It was a shoulder that was hurt, but you, you got to wonder how much that's going to affect the, the way he can hold on to the ball. Second down and about seven. In motion comes Kellen Allen. Joel back to pass. Finds Kupek alone across midfield down to the 46-yard line. Good enough for the first down. And the Salukis are in Western Illinois territory for the first time in the second half. First time we've called Chris Kupek's name, but it's only the fourth completion for Sam Bursky. But Kupek was open the whole way in good patience for him to stay open, stay out in the flat, and give Joel that time to step up out of the pressure. And Chris just gave him a good target. First down, sub. We all know the tight end is the forgotten man in the Gateway Conference. They are rarely covered by the defense. First and 10 at the 47. Joel back to pass. Looking deep. He's got Brent Little. And that's, no, it's Kellen Allen for a touchdown. <laughs> Kellen Allen broke loose at the 20-yard line and caught it for the touchdown, 47 yards. And the Salukis are back on top. There's that quick, quick drive again. <laughs> 
But, but Mike, that was Kellen Allen. If, if we get to see this, Joel lofted it up, and Kellen was about 10 yards away from the ball, and then he just exploded by his man. Watch Joel drop back, and Joel sets up a perfect pass for him right across the field, and he's about step in, uh, in step with his defender, and then Kellen Allen just breaks away and goes and gets the ball. Craig Coffin will try to add the PAT to put the Salukis back up by seven. He does right down central in the Salukis on the 47 yard pass play from Sandbursky to Kellen Allen. Go up 24 to 17. Back with the kickoff in a moment. Twenty four seventeen SIU back on top after the forty seven yard completion from Sam Bursky to Kellen Allen and we mentioned that maybe it had to start going over the top. It's exactly what happened. Here is the kickoff. It'll be number eighty one Paul Anderson at the eleven yard line right up the gut. He's got some room to the outside coffin slows him down enough and that will allow the Salukis to catch up and make the tackle at the forty seven yard line. But great field position for Western Illinois after the kickoff. You're right, Mike Coffin did slow him up just enough because otherwise he had some good speed and momentum. And he could have kept going to the outside. Coffin, good job to turn him back to the inside. Southern's defenders catching back up. We mentioned the next televised game is against Northern Iowa. So the Salukis will return home a week from tonight against the Redbirds of Illinois State who lost a heartbreaker in overtime to Western Kentucky this afternoon. It'll be Banterra Bank night at the uh, game. Banterra Bank will be giving away 5,000 Saluki pom-poms to the first 5,000 people in the stands. So that's next Saturday night at McAndrew Stadium. Game time, 6 o'clock. Play action pass. And down goes LaFalce. Justin Lowe's making his presence known. <laughs> well, LaFalce just stepped right into the arms of Lowe's and looked like he was going to unleash one down the field. I'm not sure if he had anybody open. Would have took a, a heck of a pass, but LaFalce just stepped right, into, right into him. There's we'll see 66 just engulf him here as the falls just right into the defense. It's a loss of four on the play, second and 14. See if the Southern D can come up with a couple of plays on this drive. The falls back. Here comes a screen. Other way to Glassford. He's got nowhere to go, and he loses another three yards. And it'll be third down and 16. Great pursuit on the far side by the Salukis. The officials have stopped the clock. That's the end of the quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, the Salukis lead the football game. It's 24-17. Back with the fourth quarter right after this. As we start the fourth quarter, the Salukis still lead it by seven. The third quarter went by so fast, nobody knew it was over. We were, we're, we were so used to 45 and 55 minute quarters that that one breezed along in about 30 minutes. So it's third down and 16 for the Leathernecks. Shotgun for the Falls. Nobody open. He's going to have to run out of bounds, and they're going to have to punt the football away. As he just does get across midfield, it's going to be fourth down and about 13. Great coverage in the secondary. Give that credit to the secondary. Yep, and that's what happens on a third and long. The falls has to keep looking deep. But it, again, the, the up front men got pressure too and, and forced the falls out of the pocket. Didn't give him time, but yeah, completely covered down the field by Southern. Alan Turner is back on his 15 yard line. Chris Coffey, the punter. He's standing at his 35, will get it away at about the 40. High. Turns over nicely. Takes a Western Illinois hop down to the 15 yard line. Corey Lewis. Larry Taylor. Or Taylor, excuse me, number. He got one for hot pretty good, but he's coming out. He's all right. Looking off the field. So Southern goes back to work on offense. They're going to spot it at the 16 yard line. Good defensive stand by the Salukis on that possession. Now let's see what the offense can do. They struck 
on just three plays the last time they had the ball. Again, time of possession, two to one in favor of Western Illinois, 30 to 15 thus far. But the scoreboard is is the nice way. Southern's leading it by seven. Pitch the ball to Craig Turner. Gets to the outside. Gains a couple. Second down. Mike Southern's three touchdowns came in uh, the first one, three plays, 25 yards. It was 55 seconds. Here's Turner on the, the pitch pass. And it'll be coming right at you. This is the, uh, the 3D camera coming into your living room. Kind of slipped a little bit towards the edge there on the uh, 17 or 18. Southern still doesn't have a play in yet. Clock is rolling down. The time clock, the uh, game clock rather, is at uh, 14 minutes. They've got five seconds to get the playoff. Play action. Wide open. Overthrows Kellen Allen. And I mean wide open. And Joel has missed Brent on a bomb tonight and Kellen on a what would have been about a 25 yard gain. And he was wide open. This is a good play by Southern. Brent Little goes deep, deep and takes about three defensive backs with him. There's Little going by just to the right. And Kellen Allen, you can see nobody home and just overthrown by Sam Burst. Third down and a long eight for the Salukis. Joel's waiting for the play, and now they got to call timeout. Southern takes a timeout. It's 13:54 left to go in the fourth quarter. The Salukis lead at 24 to 17. We'll be back. Following the timeout, the Salukis have it third and eight. In motion comes Kellen Allen to the near side. Play action. Joel all day to throw it. Off the fingertips of Kupek. Would not have been enough for the first down anyway. So the Salukis have to punt it away. So a nice stand by Western Illinois. And again, that offensive consistency lacking by the Salukis. They make a big play, but they yeah. can't sustain a drop. Seems like they either do it all at once or, or they just stall and can't get anything going. Kettle camp. Zach's got off some nice punts today. He's punted the ball very well tonight. Gets off another nice one. It's going to be returned. He fumbles the football. And the Salukis have the ball, I think, right at midfield. We'll wait till they uncover it. JT Wise says Southern has it, and they do. What a break. I think it was Sims back to return. And off his chest, he, he had his Brad Brashear comes up with yep. a football. Brad was right there, and as soon as the ball hit off the chest of Sims, it went into Brad's legs, I think, and Brad got a, few, a hand on it. There he is yep. at the bottom of that pile, sneaking in and grabbing that football. <laughs> and what a year Brashear has had. Yep. He's been phenomenal. One of the Western players is down on the field. I think it might be the uh, returner, Sims. Mm -hmm. well, that never should have tried to uh, to run with that football. He had a little bit of room. One. We'll come back to uh, McComb right after this message. The injured Leatherneck was Robert Hodges, number nine. He, uh, he walked off the field on his own power, so Southern takes it over first and 10 from the Western 49. And Craig Turner gets about a yard to the 48. And the Salukis would love to sustain a little drive here and put some distance between themselves and the Leathernecks. About 13 20 left in the fourth quarter. You'd like to see him use up some clock again. Southern in the in the nation, number one in scoring offense, an average of almost 50 points per game. They're, they're sitting at 24 right now. Good, good defensive effort by Western. Two turnovers for each side now. Samberski play action. With the reception, Kellen Allen, first down at the 33 yard line. Maybe the 32. They'll give him the 32. And the drive stays alive on the pass completion to Kellen Allen. 
Smart play by Allen also to stay in bounds. He could have easily went out of bounds, but if you watch him, there's about three or four defenders in front of him. Instead of taking the easy route out of bounds, stay in bounds, jump over a guy maybe and get a few more yards. Clock's still running. Clock starts now. Well, sure took a long time to get that ball set and the clock started. Wide to the right goes Allen Turner. Kupek, the tight end, is in a slot to the right. Comes back to the near side. Give it to Craig Turner. Craig busts up for about four. Let's see if the big offensive line can start controlling this line of scrimmage as they did for moments in the first half when they were getting those runs. Second down and seven. Just eat up those yards, three, four, five yards at a time. Hold on to the football. Clock will be under 12 minutes to go when they get this playoff. Now you're just looking at trying to clip off a minute at a time if you can on every other play. If you can get a minute off the clock, you've done your job. Play action again. Completion, good for very close to the first down. To Allen Turner. They may have to measure this one, but I think, oh, they're going to give him the first down, not even going to measure it. First down for the Salukis. Keep that drive going. Looked a little bit closer than that from up here. We're at about the 50 yard line. Well, I saw the mark from the, the far judge. And he looked like he was about a half yard shy of the first down marker, but the referee on the near side said, no, you've got it. And Southern will take it. First and 10, ball spotted at the 23. Play action again. Allen Turner, what a catch at the five yard line. Went out of bounds at the six and a great pitch and catch from Sam Bursky to Allen Turner. And Turner made his way all the way across the field. Good eyes by Sam Bursky. He's looking, and then he turns back to his right. Brent Little was deep, but Allen cuts underneath the defenders again. We kind of saw that play earlier where Little will go deep and take about three defenders with him. And Kellen Allen, the recipient of the Sam Bursky pack. First and goal from the six now for the Salukis. See if they can punch this one in. In motion goes Kupek. Give it to Craig Turner. Craig up the gut. Pushes and pushes and pushes down near the goal line. A helmet goes flying into the end zone. Chris Kupek's helmet goes three yards deep. But they're going to spot it, I think, at the two-yard line. But that's OK. Clock continues to run. It'll be under 11 minutes. Turner just getting behind this wall. Watch 71. It's Jimmy Wegger. Just get right behind those big guys. That's what they're there for. They push and push and get those holes for you. Chris Kupek doing a nice job sealing on the outside. Craig Turner not giving up. Second and goal. Two tight ends. Turner. Down to the half yard line. And it's third down. But more importantly, the clock will go under 10 minutes when the Salukis get the next playoff. And that's key right now. As the clock runs, it's at 10-19. So Southern will use the clock. They will try to score. There is a good throng of Saluki fans here tonight as well. We've seen Joel throw a few, and then they're running up the middle with, with Turner. A lot of times, Joel does that naked bootleg. Third and goal. Turner, touchdown. Great seal blocking on the left side. And Craig Turner takes it in for the first time in a long time. The Salukis are back up by 13 with an extra point away from being 14. You could kind of just feel on third and one or third and maybe one foot that Craig Turner was going to get in there. And Look at the left side. Look at Kupex block and JT Wise. Dad, I think you could have run that one in. That was a huge <laughs> hole on the left side. What a great job of sealing by Chris and JT on that left side. Your fullbacks and your tight ends, you know, you need those guys to do the blocking for you. Give them a lot of credit on that play. Extra point is up and good. And with 9.57 left to go in the football game, Southern extends its lead back to 14. It's 31-17. We'll be back.
That was a 49 yard drive by the Salukis that took a few minutes off the clock. It is now at 957 and they're back up two touchdowns. Coffin ready to kick it away. Kicks it high and deep and it's going to be caught at the three yard line by Paul Anderson. Sneaks his way up across the 20 to about the 25 yard line. And Western Illinois will get to work at the 25. And the Saluki defense is a little fired up. The offense did a nice job in that last drive, and things are uh, things are going well right now. And if you're Western, you need to answer what Southern has just done. And we talked Southern. about it earlier. New Hampshire lost today, so a Saluki victory combined with that New Hampshire loss will likely elevate the Salukis back to the top spot in the 1AA football polls. LaFalse back in there. A lot of the Leatherneck fans departing after that last Saluki touchdown. Glassford, the lone setback. It's a draw to Glassford, trying to get outside, gets by Frankie Johnson and then gets good yardage up to the 37 yard line. Good play call by Western. You may be expecting to come out and, and throw and try to do something quickly, but they, there's plenty of time. 9.45 on the clock. And give it to Glassford. He's been your guy. And then good job by uh, Travis to get out of bounds and stop the clock at 9.45. Saluki's maybe in a bit of a prevent, which allows for draw plays to work better at this stage of the ball game when you're, when you're in a prevent. Uh, Southern doesn't want to give up the big play here, but would like to see Western Illinois have to march the ball methodically if they're going to do something. There goes LaFalse. He's going to be hit after a gain of about one. Clock continues to run. Big Mark Phillip in there, giving chase. Defensive line is, has come to play tonight. There's no question. And what a difference Frank Johnson has made back in that backfield. Here's LaFalse. This is the planned draw again. But the linebackers stay home. And you're right, Mark Phillip made the first contact right at about the 36-yard uh, line. You just keep watching where the original line of scrimmage is and watch how far of a push but Southern's defensive line gets quickly. They're already about two steps into that leatherneck backfield. Western's got a hustle here. Only seven seconds left on the uh, play clock. Southern's coach just says he didn't get it off in time. No penalty on the play. It'll be third down and eight. Yeah, Sims probably an uncatchable ball, and he wasn't even looking at the ball. And the, the defense by Clayton Johnson just overthrows everybody. Clayton got beat by Sims earlier, but defensive backs, they don't have that mentality. They just come right back the next play, and they know they're going to get beat every once in a while. But Clayton, with a nice job, was with him step for step on this one. It was well overthrown. you got to have that short memory if you're a defensive back. Forget about the last play and move on. Patrick Jordan comes in. Mark Phillip goes out. Southern goes with an extra defensive back. Will rush three. They're faking a blitz. They back off. Good pressure. Here comes the big man. That's Wims again, I think. It was. So Lorenzo Wims out of Fort Wayne, transferred from Division I Ball State. What a difference he has made on this pass rush tonight. That was a three man rush. Coming from the blind side, and oh, the falls. Never saw him. So back to punt for the Leathernecks, Chris Coffey. Alan Turner standing on the Saluki 28 yard line. Southern ought to get a decent, get some decent field position out of this one. Low line There's drive. Running into the kicker, up in the kicker. Was it a. Let's see if it was a personal foul or running it into. Looks like he, they, he might have got pushed into the kicker, but a flag is down where the kick came up. You, you got to feel that Southern's defense just running came out. into the kicker. Just a That's five a yarder. Point. They were on a mission. They may decline it too and give Southern the ball to 26 instead of re-kick it. We'll see what happens. Here's the call. We're running into the kicker. Number eight on the defense. Five yard penalty. The penalty's declined. Results in play. So the Salukis will take over first and 10 from their 26. A pretty good acting job there by the punter Coffee trying to uh, 
say he was hurt, but it's amazing how quickly they bounce right back up. <laughs> I, I think after the those, referee makes the call, some of those kickers sneak into uh, those theater classes, and <laughs> do a nice acting job. But he did get run into, but yeah, he, he's all right. But Southern will take the ball at the 26. 7.59 left to go. Southern would like a 74-yard drive that eats up about 7.58 of this clock. They haven't done so yet tonight. They haven't had very long drives. But one more score will put this thing away. Sam Bursky behind center. Give it to Turner. Craig's going nowhere fast and a lose two yards. We're looking at it, but if it gets down to time, both teams have two timeouts left. Here it is again. There was a little bit of a delay, and Craig was trying to go back to his left, and there was just nothing there on the left side. Second down and long for the Salukis. Antoine Jackson in the backfield now for Southern. Back to pass, Joel. Trying to get it to Alan Turner and just plain missed him. He was open. It's going to be third and long now, third and 11 for the Salukis. We mentioned New Hampshire lost to William and Mary today. 42 to 10 was that final. Delaware lost at home to Hofstra, 10 to 6. So Delaware does not lose very often at home, but it did so today against Hofstra. Third down and 11 now. Wide to the left goes Turner. Wide to the right goes Brent Little. See what Southern does on third and 11. Same play to Kupek. Only gains about seven or eight yards, and Southern's going to have to punt the ball away. And you knew you needed 11, yet the play only went for seven or eight. Actually, the play went for 10, but they needed 11. So it's fourth down. So Luke is going to have to punt the ball away. Clock is running under seven minutes to go. Just Sam Bursky's ninth completion. Kupek always with good hands. And Kettle Camp, who we mentioned, has done a heck of a job tonight. Will come on. Five punts, an average of 36 yards a kick. Returns have been minimal on the punt team tonight. And last time he punted it, Southern got a turnover. It's Reggie Gray back at the 28-yard uh, line. He was not in on the previous punt. Good snap. High. Turns over nicely. Here comes Brashear. But Gray went up the middle. And then he goes backwards and loses six yards. Yeah, Gray slipped on the cutback and Philip Doyle right there to put him down. Sometimes great players try to do too much. And Gray tried to do too much that time. So the Leathernecks take over, first and 10 at the 27-yard line. They're down 14 with a little over six minutes to go. And there's Reggie there, trying to reverse his field, and loses all the yardage he gained. Like I was talking about Sam Bursky, he's eight for 16. I said nine completions. He has eight for 16 for 153. LaFalse, the Leatherneck quarterback, 25 of 35. 275 yards, two TDs. Glassford, the tailback, wide to the left side. Comes number 18, Carl Sims. Trips to the right. Pressure again. Look for the ball. He caught it and went out of bounds. Clayton Johnson that time did look for the ball and lost the ball. And Sims got behind him. Yeah, Johnson and Sims are just having a battle out here. Clayton Johnson with an outstretched hand wanted to knock it down or take it away, but floats right over him. The false with a lot of pressure. There's Wim spinning around the right side. He's going to get pressure from the left, too. You'll see Clayton Johnson just cut in front of Sims, trying to reach he, up and get it. You get know, it. he's right there. He just jumped at the wrong time. Got two feet in. You only need one in college, but good concentration by Sims. Now the false is over 300 yards passing, 308. The short passing, you know, Western offenses are, sure get a lot of yards against Southern. Reggie Gray, first down at the 21. But you can also look to how, when they get to the end zone, how many times do they get in? Yeah. And uh, Southern defense inside the red zone has been very good this year. 
false on that one. Just had a little bit more time. Not, not as much pressure as he's been getting. So Gray cuts across the middle. Nice play. Marlon Houston there to bring him down. Haven't called Marlon's name in a while. Trips to the right again. LaFall steps up, gets around some people. He's going to have to throw it away or take a sack and throws it away. Good, good pressure by that defensive line. Patrick Jordan got up ended coming from the safety position, and he pretty much did a somersault, landed right back on his feet, and he never missed a step. He was right back after it, after LaFall. So see number 11 coming in here. I think it's Glassford gets a trip. Look at that. <laughs> Jordan just does a Stays flip. He's right already after, after him. him. Rinella in there as well. Southern came Wimps. with a blitz. If Jordan and Ranella are in the backfield, they're blitzing. Second down and 10. Again, trips to the right side. Be careful of Marco Thomas. There it is to Marco Thomas. Trying to get outside, trying to cut. Here he comes back across the grain again. Cut block, cut block. And out of bounds. And you know, I wonder if that's a planned play because they've done it twice the exact same way where he reverses his field. Well, they get that defense shifting over to the far side and then just cutting back. We'll see it here. The false gets a nice block on the cutback, too. Everybody going that way and then they there reverse the field. Good stiff arm at the end. <laughs> Poor Clayton. They <laughs> got a first down. <laughs> Johnson playing hard. Clayton Johnson. First and goal from the eight. They're knocking at the door again. And Billy Beer just pushed over. A and Billy's hoping 78 move first. Cortez Moore. We'll see if big number 78 for Western moved or if Billy just got a little anxious. You got to figure the Western moved. If Beard was coming in like that. They're going to have to talk about it. Dead ball. False start. False start. They Number got him. Billy did it. The there it was. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. So now it's first and goal from the 14. Sometimes, 13. Yeah, sometimes, Mike, that's not so bad. You get that extra five yards of cushion to work with. You can send a guy deeper in the end zone. Gives them better slants mm -hmm. because we know LaFalce likes to throw the slant pattern. They've only thrown really one out pattern all night, and that was the touchdown to Sims in the left corner, which is where he's coming to the left side now. Don't be surprised if they look right and then come back to Calvin Sims. Looking right. Touchdown. Reggie Gray. Gray yep. Boy, did he zing that ball in there. The ball's a nice job stepping up through the protection. Had to get it there quick, and he did. 13-yard reception to Reggie Gray. Great as you see the ball stepping up, and Gray right on the goal line. Western trying to put it back within a touchdown here. The extra points up. And he made it. So we've got a little over five minutes left in this one. It's the Salukis, 31, Western Illinois, 24. We'll be back. <laughs> 31, 24, the score now, and they're lining up for an onside kick. Taylor Rowan. We'll try to get it to 10 yards. Southern's got its hands, team on the field. Big hop, and it's caught by Patrick Jordan right at the 48-yard line. Well, you thought there was plenty of time left for them to stop us and get the ball back, but now they're going to give the Salukis the ball at the 50-yard line. Well, they go with the onside kick, and you put those guys up there that you know got the good hands and aren't afraid to take a hit, and boy, Patrick Jordan's one of those guys. And Goes up and gets it, and you leave yourself wide open, but you got your guys there to protect you. The ball takes a nice hop. Hit the perfect second bounce, but Patrick went up and got it. 
And Southern now has the ball first and 10 at the 49 yard line. Interesting call. With a chance to put the game away. Antoine Jackson, a nice burst. Mike, you're just waiting for Antoine to get loose. You know, once he gets past that, that first line of guys, he's explosive. Timeout on the play. Timeout Western Illinois. We've got 5.02 left in this one. That leaves Western with one timeout. Southern has two. And we'll take a short break. 31-24th score, 502 left. Back after this. While we were away, Joel Samberski rushed for about three yards. Western Illinois again is going to take its final timeout. Let's see the play here. Joel wanted play action pass. Only had really one receiver out on the pattern though and he kept it himself. Took it to the right side and got up to the 44 yard line. It's going to be third down in about three. And Don Patterson has wasted his timeouts now. They're out of timeouts. And if Southern, if Southern gets the first down here, they've got a chance to put it away. So we'll be back after this. All right, this this may be the play of the game. It's third down and three for the Salukis. If they get it, Western's out of timeouts and Southern can pretty well run the clock out. Samberski wants to pass. Wide open, JT Wise, first down inside the 40-yard line. And again, it's that fullback, JT Wise, who makes plays. He goes out on patterns and makes plays. Good job by Wise to just release from the backfield. And Joel's looking everywhere else, but he's got that safety net. JT Wise right out there in good hands by JT. Good catch. Make sure you got it. Go down and Southern's got the first down. Hey, if you guys have a question for Jerry Kill about tonight's game, they're going to have a ask an evening with Coach Kill Thursday night at the University Mall in Carbondale. You can listen to the show on Magic 95.1 with Mike Reese. It's an evening with Coach Kill Thursday night at the mall on Magic 95.1. That's Thursday night as the play nets about eh, half a yard. Antoine Jackson in there to, to do the carrying for Southern as the clock ticks toward the four minute mark. Southern looking for another close gateway victory. They'll take it. A win is a win is a win. There was only one lopsided gateway score today, and that was Youngstown all over Indiana State, 45 to nothing. The rest of the games were all close football games. Sam Bursky back to pass. He's not done yet. Alan Turner down to the 13-yard line. One more score wouldn't hurt, I suppose. It would definitely ice the game. You can't stop playing. Joel making up for the that first half and now getting his completions and his passes in there. There's one to Turner. Boy, Turner was wide open as he, as he got past the linebacker, um, Mylon Woodward, Woodard, and it's first down for the Salukis at the 13. Southern returns home next week against Illinois State. Six o'clock kickoff at McAndrew Stadium. Redbirds with the heartbreaking overtime loss to Western Kentucky today, 37 to 34. Antoine gets it inside the 10 down to about the nine yard line. As the clock now goes tick, 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 it'll be well under three minutes to go when the Salukis get this playoff. Guy like Antoine Jackson, that's what you're asking him to do right now. Just go in there, run hard, hold on to the ball. I tell you, he's just happy to be in there playing football. And he's going to break one one of these days. Two hands guarding the ball on the play, as you saw. And Joel will use all 25 seconds of the allotted clock here. 2.40 clock running, five seconds on the play clock. Joel stays in bounds. That was the smartest play of all. He could have dove out of bounds. He could have thrown the ball away, but he just kept the clock running. It'll be under two minutes to go when the Salukis do this third down play. And that's just their, you know, the 
the play fake. And he's probably got about one or two reads. If it's not there, just go down, you know, stay in bounds. Don't throw the ball away. Don't, don't do anything silly. And just run this clock out. Senior leadership. Third down for the Salukis. Play action. They're not calling holding. They're not calling anything against Kupek on that play. And I frankly can't believe it. But Southern will come on and try a field goal and three points will win this football game. Here you'll see Kupek on this near side. Number 86. He's come on. <laughs> he wants to call. <laughs> Coffin out of the hold of Carnes at the 17 yard line. 27 yard attempt. Spot is down, kick is up. Right down the middle, and Craig Coffin has iced this football game at the 148 mark. The Salukis add three more points. It's 34 to 24. We'll be back after this. Salukis lead it by 10, 34 to 24, with under two minutes to go in the football game, 148 on the clock. Coffin to tee it up. Puts it into play, kicks it high and deep, and it'll be Paul Anderson at the three. To the 15, to the 20, to the 25 yard line where Western will start. And now we're gonna see Western try to go over the top because the short stuff isn't gonna get it done. They're completely out of timeouts. Craig Coffin's field goal to put Southern up by 10 puts him at 208 career points. That's uh, one point behind the fifth spot. Carver Shannon, who played for Southern back in uh, 55 through the 58 season, has 209 points. So Craig slowly climbing the uh, career points charts. Tom Kutzos is number one, 312. The Salukis again have kept Travis Glassford under 100 yards. He's only got 53 yards rushing on the night. The false. And Clayton Johnson gets a clean hit on number 11, Marco Thomas. And Clayton says, boy, that one felt good. <laughs> you can see just Johnson just waiting back there for the ball to arrive. And he had, had a clean shot, a clean look. And the false looking all the way at his receiver. And Johnson just right behind him. As soon as the ball gets there, so does Johnson. Second and 10. And again, Western does not have, has not shown the ability this year to throw the ball down the field. They've nickel and dime people to death. Off the hands of Thomas. Marco thought he should have had that one and it almost went right into Frank Johnson's hands. And it's third and 10. Well, if Southern holds on here, Mike, certainly not an easy victory. And that just echoes everything that, that you hear about the gateway. You know, it's, it's probably one of, if not the toughest conference in one double A. And there are no easy wins. Southern taking overtime last week by a Missouri State team that just beat Northern Iowa. And this will be their ninth straight Gateway Conference win and 15 out of the last 16. And there's a pass behind everybody. Southern has won 14 out of its last 15 Gateway Conference games. This will make it 15 out of 16. They've won nine straight in conference play as well. And in the Gateway Conference, not an easy thing to do. Their last loss was two years ago at Northern Iowa on the last game of the year. We all remember that one. <laughs> Fourth down for Western Illinois. If they don't make this, Southern can take a knee three times and the ball game is over. Trips to the right. Here comes a blitz. Everybody's coming. The false is going down back at the five yard line. And this football game is over. A defensive exclamation point to end this one, but ooh, what a fight. Southern brought the house. It was a seven point game at halftime. The Western never quit. Got back to within seven again in the third quarter. But Southern finally, finally was able to make a couple of stands defensively. 
And all they got to do is take a knee a few times to win this football game. When things don't get any easier for this Leatherneck team, they go to Youngstown. They're ranked in the top 25, 22 in the latest poll. They'll, they'll be out there next week. And then number three, Western Kentucky's here in two more weeks. And this Western uh, Illinois team, a, a team that's capable of beating some of those teams. Sam Bursky will take a knee, and that's one time that he'll have to do it. Joel ended up on the afternoon passing the football, nine out of 18, 162 yards, a touchdown and an interception with the longest one, the 47-yard pass to Kellen Allen. LaFalse, a great game, 26 out of 36, 308 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Be a happy in, bus ride home for this Saluki team, but boy, it's going to be some, some tired players after this victory. Jerry Kill and company coming away from Western with a win. Saw Coach Took on the sideline. Penalty marker down on the play. Ball. False start, False start on taking a knee. Five penalty, Nothing down. is easy for the Saluki team when they get a false start on taking a knee. Wow. Frank Johnson, what a <laughs> game he had. You know, that's the Frank that we know, you know, that can deliver those big hits and get to the ball quickly over there with Jamarcus Jordan and Marlon Heaston. Let's see if Southern can, can take a knee here <laughs> without a penalty. Boy, this game just won't end. There's the knee by Joel. Take your time, Joel. Come back a few yards or something. Then you don't even have to take another knee. See whether they blow it dead or not. 30, 29, 28. Oh, they're going to have to take one more knee. Just go up there and take it. He's got to take a knee. Great work by our crew tonight. Capturing the images tonight of this football game, and Southern is going to come away with a very hard fought victory and go to four and one on the season. More importantly, two and zero oh in the Gateway Conference. And there it is. This ball game is over. And Southern wins its ninth straight Gateway Conference game, 15 out of the last 16. And the number two Salukis will no doubt be the number one Salukis in the nation when the polls come out later this week as New Hampshire lost. But as for this game, the Salukis win it. Our final score tonight, 34 to 24. Our post-game show begins after these messages. Mike Trude along with Thad Jackson. It's time to take a look at the final scoreboard brought to you by the SIU Alumni Association, probably serving alumni, students, family, and friends of Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. And there you see at the final score, Southern Illinois 34 and Western Illinois 24. Welcome now to the Brian Furniture Post Game Show. Brian Furniture in downtown Heron invites you to sit back and enjoy all of Saluki football. For the most comfortable seat in the house, shop the three floors of Brian Furniture. What a night it was for Craig Turner, the sophomore from Louisiana, had a heck of a game. Three touchdowns along the way. He was the player of the game presented by the Beard Law Firm. The Beard Law Firm congratulates the SIU player of the game, Craig Turner. The Beard Law Firm is proud of their association with the many SIU graduates who have worked with them over the years. Craig Turner, 22 carries, 142 yards, and three touchdowns. The Beard Law Firm player of the game. So with the victory, the Salukis go to 4-1 and one on the year, 2-0 and oh in the Gateway Conference. The loss drops Western Illinois to 2-4 and four and 0-2 oh and two in the conference. Our next broadcast will be November 12th when the Salukis travel to Cedar Falls, Northern Iowa, to take on the Panthers. Saturday, November 12th. All those uh, great moments coming your way November 12th right here on Mediacom. Again, for Thad Jackson, I'm Mike Trude. Again, the final score. The Southern Illinois Salukis victorious on the road. 34 to 24 over Western Illinois. Thanks to our crew and good night from McComb.